Beautiful day in Charlottesville, the University of Virginia opening up their 2020 campaign with a young signal caller making his first start. Lefty Brennan Armstrong for Duke, the transfer, Chase Bryce at the helm. The masked coaches, Virginia and Duke next. The last time the Virginia Cavaliers took the field at Scott Stadium, they delivered the biggest win of the Bronco Menden Hall era. He's got room across the 30, running inside the numbers to the 20. Bryce Perkins to the house! Touchdown! He's sacked in the end zone! Knocks it away! Touchdown! Touchdown! Who's win, baby? The point is over. After 15 years, Virginia will take the Commonwealth Cup. We have a head and tail. Today, one week after a postponement of their rematch with the Hokies, the Hoos kick off their 2020 season against the Duke squad. Looking to bounce back to a tough ACC start. Wahoos and Blue Devils next on the ACC Network. Which way you want to kick? Blue Devils taking the field here at Scott Stadium, looking for their first win of the year. 0-2 after two ACC losses, looking to right the ship. Meanwhile, Virginia, because of a COVID postponement, they haven't even played football yet. This is their first game of the year. Their original opener, or not even their original opener, but their opener last weekend against Virginia Tech postponed until December 12th. Alongside Mark Herzlick and Eric Wood, I'm Chris Cotter in the booth. And I tell you what, Mark, both of these teams trying to find themselves, trying to find their identity early on in the season, but for two totally different reasons. Yeah, you mentioned the, the inability for UVA to get their season started. And then Duke had get got started early, but they already suffered two ACC losses. Both teams have first-year starters at that quarterback position. So, yes, they are trying to find their winning identity, but an area where they are not wondering whether they have production is at this pass rush position. You see Victor Demukeji on the left, Charles Snowden on the right. Demukeji for Duke has started every single game since arriving at Duke. Has elite get off, 17 and a half career sacks. Charles Snowden is the absolute leader of this defense and for another area of strength that these two schools share. Let's bring in our third member of our Motley crew, Eric Wood. <laughs> Both of these teams have excellent tight ends for the Blue Devils. Noah Gray might be the best player on their entire team. He not only leads the team in receptions, he leads the entire ACC in receptions for tight ends on the opposite side of the field. Tony Poljan is a six foot seven, 265 pound monster, and they think he's going to have an incredible year this year. The quarterback transfer from Central Michigan. Back to you guys. All right, thank you. Appreciate that. Duke and White. Virginia in blue, and you see the fans here at Scott Stadium, uh, at a limit of a thousand fans, so uh, very sparsely populated because of COVID distancing restrictions, but some folks lucky enough to get in and see this opener for Virginia and Duke looking for their first win of the year. Charlie Ham will kick off as Duke won the toss and deferred to the second half. The freshman from Atlanta puts toe to leather and we're underway. Jones on the return for Virginia. 15, still dancing his way, gets out to the 18th. Tavares Kelly, check that on the return. Maybe a big pile up here. Could the ball be out? Duke sideline says it is. This could be a big turnover here early on in the game. Waiting for the official signal. Still haven't gotten it yet from a referee, Gary Patterson. Ruling on the field, the fumble, recovery by Duke, down. It was a fumble, so early on, the first big play of the game is on the opening kickoff. Wow, what a huge play right off the bat by Duke and this coverage unit. It looked uh, like maybe 96 Chris Rumpf got down there. One of their all-star pass rusher DNs ripped it out. Ruling on the field, his play is under further review. Obviously, this one's going to be reviewed in that mosh pile. A replay official is Rick Page today. Gosh, and how big would this be for Duke? Coming off two losses to open up the season. 
one of the reasons why they had so, you know, the second loss versus Boston College last week was they had so many turnovers themselves. This would be huge going in the momentum of Duke this early in the game. And, you know, real question mark in terms of ball security for this UVA team. The one thing you really can't simulate in practice is that full live special teams rep. And this is going to be See, he was very... in there stripping that ball out. Chris oh, Rump. Rump. He's right there. Mr. Rump. Already making his presence felt. Mousey was in there too. The first hit, but... What a, what a huge momentum changing play if this stands. And it's very difficult to see when exactly the ball comes out. If the knee's down, when... You know, who recovers it. So it'd be very difficult to overturn the ruling on the field of a fumble and a recovery. Freshman Dorian Mozzie was in there as well. Young man out of Detroit, Michigan, number 35. You see him there. Then you see Rump coming in. One of the stars on the defense playing special teams. And I guess, Mark, this is why they do it. Yeah, absolutely. They make and, and it's funny, Dave Cutcliffe talked about how he... Duke ball. He talked about how he had... Do kind of recover from the loss last week and got him out on the field on Sunday right away, went full speed. Big fumble. Now we get to see Duke's offense. And you get to see Chase Bryce, the transfer from Clemson. Of course, threw one of the most famous passes in Clemson history to beat Syracuse after Trevor Lawrence went down with an injury, but now he's a Duke Blue Devil. And he's looking to lead this team. Pitch to Deion Jackson early. Jackson tries to cut it up. He's brought down after a game. Maybe a yard. Mandy Alonso there on the stop. Yeah, and you mentioned Chase Bryce and you know his transfer over from Clemson. And you know, he's one of those transfers that entered the portal and was such a big acquisition for Dave Cutcliffe in this Duke offense. He has two starts in his career already this year, two losses. He's looking to get a little bit more consistency, better accuracy, and confidence through his wide receivers. Bryce with the pump, pressure comes, and it's almost intercepted. Flag down on the play. Let's check the marker. All sides. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the second time. Got an early jump on that one. He lined up offside, but pressure already on Chase Bryce. He has been known for getting a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks. Started with the corner blitz. Jackson again on the left side. Bangs into that Virginia defense. Tough sledding. Give him a yard. Joey Blunt there to take the stop in the safety position. The third down. Duke is... In that striking territory, they've had trouble getting the ball in the end zone, especially through the air, in their first two games. And he picked up the first down and a quick run up the middle by Deion Jackson. They decided to go fast. Looks like they're going to go fast again to Chase Bryce. Yeah, Jackson got it down to the three-yard line. Let's see if he can put it across the end zone. Big hit. Stuffed. Zane Zandir. ZZ stop. Making the stop. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, as a former psychopath linebacker myself, I love watching Zane Zandier play. I mean, he is just playing with reckless abandon. Good hit, good stop. He's you mentioned Duke level. having problems in the red zone. One for six over those first two games, so going a little tempo here. Trying to put Virginia back on their heels. Second and goal. Chase Bryce will keep it. Trying to lever his way into the end zone, but can't do it. Third and goal now from about the one and a half. Third and goal from the one and a half. You saw a little bit how they wanted to use Chase Bryce's legs in that situation. I wouldn't be surprised to try to get him out on the edge, try to maybe look for number 87, or this formation could be a quick toss. Give the Jackson. He's met the backfield. Slow down enough. Finally, the stop made after big old 91. Mandy Alonzo came in and crashed. Nelson finally bringing down Jackson. Loss on the play, though, bring up four down and a field goal attempt for Duke. And you saw Duke go fast. They got up to the line of scrimmage, didn't huddle for very long before that third down play. And to me, I would much rather get the right play. Didn't look like it was situated perfectly right, but 
Great play by Manny Alonzo. Knife through those two tight ends, getting the backfield for a big stop. Charlie Ham on a 25-yard attempt. Good snap, good hold. Kick is straight through the uprights. And Duke, following a Virginia turnover on the opening kickoff, settles for three, but at least they got three. First on the board, the Blue Devils. Deion Jackson met by Alonzo in the backfield. Cleaned up by Nelson. Blue Devils go up three. Duke up early, three to nothing after a Virginia turnover, fumbling the opening kickoff. And Charlie Ham booting through a 25-yard field goal. So good momentum for a team on the road. Looking to uh, pick up their first win of the year. The Blue Devils 0-2, both overall and in ACC play. Well, let's try this one again, Chris. <laughs> well, let's we'll try it on the ball. <laughs> without Tavares Kelly, because Billy Kemp is back to return this kick. And Tavares Kelly Jr. fumbled the opening kick and obviously special teams coach and coach Mendenhall opting for a different option there for Virginia. Uh, you know, last year Virginia had a magical season, but Mark, look at some of the firepower they lost off of that season. Yeah, you know, Joe Reed was a really dynamic player for them and Hassis Dubois really came into his own. Lots of big catches, those, that deep ball threat, but Bryce Perkins, I mean, he did it on the ground with his legs in the air. 79% of UVA's offense last year came through Bryce Perkins, and now that 79% falls on the shoulders of Brennan Armstrong. Brennan Armstrong, young left-hander out of Shelby, Ohio, sophomore, making his first career start, his first career pass attempt. Just low, couldn't quite get it in the hands of Billy Kent the fourth. You look what Armstrong is working with, 6'2", 215. He's got the size, he's got the ability to use his legs a, a little bit, and he feels very confident in this offense. Feels like he's been trained for this starting role since he got here. Here's the give to Talapapa. Maybe a yard, Chris Rump is there for the stop. So quickly third down. Yeah, third and nine, and Chris Rump was in there coming off the edge. Really preseason All-American defensive end. And third and nine, I mean, this is a, a pure passing situation, and with those guys gone that we mentioned before, possibly look for Terrell Jana, number 13, who's at the top of your screen. Going to the bottom of the screen, fade up, tried to hit the big Freshman Lavelle Davis, Jr., 6'7". They couldn't connect. Just like that, three and out. What'd you say, Chris? 6'7"? Six, six, seven. Seven. Jeremiah Freshman. Lewis, who's six foot even. Yeah, and you get some pressure. Really a clean runner right up the middle. It's Shaka Hayward. And Armstrong not able to plant his feet, but they, they talk about Lavelle Davis at 6'7". Really... Bronco Mendel say he's always open. He doesn't have to take a step, and he's open because he's so much taller than guys. Just got to get on the ball. Nash Griffin into punt for Virginia. End over end punt. No fair catch made. Picked up by Jalen Calhoun. He's wrapped up after a minimal gain. Dangerous situation for Calhoun, but he's able to make the catch and hold on to it. Coach Cutcliffe entering his 13th season. Two-time ACC Coach of the Year. He's really turned this program around. You know, Mark, I think about Duke in the ACC over the years. Every now and then a good season, but Cutcliffe has had him, you know, with both six in the last eight years. Yeah, he's really turned him around. And it's no longer a surprise when Duke football gives you a good game. And that's due to Cutcliffe. Well, the one surprise this year is he's calling the plays as the head coach. Only ACC head coach to do that on offense this year. Empty backfield for Bryce. Pressure coming on the edge. He gets rid of it. Complete to the big tight end. Noah Gray. Eric Wood told us to look out for this kid. He's going to be involved in this offense all day long. Yeah, he is. And, you know, Cutcliffe's going fast. He, he's, he's told us that he feels comfortable with Chase Bryce under center or taking the shotgun snap going fast getting the defense off guard 
Durant's on the left side. Navy picks up a yard. Snowden and Taylor, two of the linebackers there to bring him down. They are both so good. Talk about Charles Snowden, he's 6'7", 240 pounds, senior out of Maryland. And then on the other side, Noah Taylor, 6'5", 220 pound, junior out of Maryland. Both these guys can get after the quarterback, but do a ton of other things. Stand up, walk down, drop in coverage. Quick pass, the slant is going to be incomplete. Blunt with a big hit on Calhoun. Jalen Calhoun couldn't hang on. You're seeing what Dave Cutcliffe's trying to do early. He's getting empty formations, trying to spread out this UVA defense. So it takes some of the pass rushers away from the line of scrimmage. And a lot of these open looks with the tight end extended. Third and nine for Bryce and the Blue Devils. Bryce with time, overshoots his receiver down the left sideline, though, Jake Bobo. As Devontae Cross was in coverage, and now Duke will be forced to punt. That defensive back position group for UVA really needs to, to step up this year. They had a lot of injuries last year. Their top 11 defensive backs were either injured last year in the season or had surgery after the season. And in order for this UVA defense and Nick Howell to call the plays he wants to call, that secondary needs to be healthy and covering guys well. Porter Wilson punts this down to Billy kept the fourth, makes the fair catch at his own eight-yard line. 43 yards on the kick. Virginia now, after a three and out on their first possession, they'll have an opportunity to make some hay offensively when we come back to Charlottesville, Virginia. Still got another game after ours tonight on the ACC Network. 8 o'clock Eastern, North Carolina State taking on 20th ranked Virginia Tech. It's our ACC Network primetime matchup presented by Geico. Hokies 4-0 in home openers under Justin Fuente. Looking to make that five straight and remain perfect. Eric, what do you got on this offensive line for the Hoos? This offensive line for Virginia has a ton of experience. Over 100 starts combined return for them. And that includes a six foot ten left tackle in Ryan Swoboda that had a start last year at tight end. This experienced group should provide Armstrong enough time to get his feet wet early in this game in his first ever college start. Everybody on this Virginia team is tall. It's amazing. Armstrong's going to keep it, find some room, and he'll pick up close to a first down. Looks like he may pick it up. Those are the type of plays we would see from Bryce Perkins last year. We were wondering whether it would be the same thing with Armstrong. As you, as you watch him, he is able to kind of see where the offensive line is creating those holes, and he has enough strength with his legs to pick those up. Fumble the snap, picks it up quickly. And Clinton connected his tight end to transfer from Central Michigan, Tony Poljan. Yeah, I mean, you talk about composure. You get the ball, snap to you before you're ready, before you're looking. Bounces on the ground to get That's up. That's a home turf bounce right there, too, isn't it? It is. And I, who do you find? You find the 6 7 tight end right in the middle of the field. Might as well throw it to him. Because uh, best chance of getting open. Good play by Marquise Waters defending the play and not stopping when the ball hits the ground. Armstrong started all four years at Shelby High School in Northern Ohio. Giving it to Simpson, Shane Simpson. Give him about four. It'll bring up third down for Virginia. And Simpson's one of those transfer guys they got this offseason. He was an FCS All-American from Townsend in the couple carries early. But this third and five, you want to look to see where number 13 is. They like to get him the ball early. Instead, Armstrong's going to keep it and try and get it on his own. Slips one tackle. And he's going to be close to the marker. It's funny, as I'm saying, you want to try to find where number 13 is. He wasn't even on the field. I don't think he was on the field for the last third down either, which is very surprising. Yeah. He'll pick it up. So the key moves and chains. Now it's fourth oh. and one. So he was short. He doesn't think he was. Looks like Rump is down on the field right now middle of the field around the 30-yard line getting attended to by the training staff. One of the team captains of this team, yeah. yeah. I don't want to speculate, but you know, this would 
this would be this would be tough. I mean, Chris Rump is just a leader and a guy who uh, they're going to really need if this blue defense wants to do what they do best. And we'll see when we come back. In a fourth and one for Virginia, and the drunk uh, injured on the play and walking off under his own power, so that was a good sign for Duke. And it might be an even better sign for them if they can force a punt here for Virginia on fourth down and get the football back to their offense. We'll be back after this. Nash Griffin to punt for Virginia on fourth and one. Coach Mendenhall opting to punt it away. Fair catch made by Calhoun this time, and he makes it at the 27. So another opportunity to check out Chase Bryce in this Duke offense. Eric Wood is down there on the field at Scott Stadium, where it's got to be kind of quiet, isn't it, Eric? I'll tell you what, they're doing a great job of pumping sound in here. You can probably hear it through my microphone. There's a 1,000 fans in attendance today. Duke got 200 and Virginia got 800. And the majority of people in Virginia is friends and family of the players and coaches. Yeah, thanks. You can certainly see the stands, social distancing. but able to get here to watch the game. And quarterback and running back go separate ways. A little mis uh, misdirection there between uh, Mateo Duran and Chase Bryce. Some confusion ends up in a loss. Good. UBA signaling they got the football out. So they're going to mark him down. Field, progress and stop. Second down. Boy, Chase Bryce thought he might have fumbled too. He looked like he might have kind of run off the field. Forward progress stopped before the ball came out. That's what the ruling is on the field. Loss of a yard on the play. Bryce now will fake to Durant. Throws near side, finds his receiver. That's a big old Damon Filiol Johnson. Great kick returner, one of the top kick returners in the country last year. Now more expected that of him uh, on the offensive side. Yeah, they're looking to him to be a deep threat receiver for this Duke offense. Nice little comeback route, third and short. And he's got to look to try to find where 87 is. Noah Gray, big tight end in the middle of the field. He's in the slot top of the screen they hand it off to Durant bangs his way close to that first Good. down marker what a big hit Zandier was there Nick Jackson Nick, Nick Jackson just got underneath the pads of Mateo Durant and drove him backwards Nick Jackson the guy that Nick Howell said had just such a special offseason he got kind of thrown into the, the fire last year due to some injuries and Started the Orange Bowl, played some in the ACC championship game, and he said that he left with this kind of knowledge of what he needed to improve on. Big tackle there, physical play. Yeah, it looked like Durant had some momentum, and it was stopped immediately. So another four down, another three and out. And Porter Wilson running it back to Billy Kemp, who makes the fair catch. So dueling fair catches here on punts and three and outs between these two offenses. Are you surprised by that, Mark, or is this kind of the game you expected from the start with the defense has really taken over? I am a little bit surprised. I think when you know, we talk about both these teams trying to find out their identity, just not a lot of opportunity for either one of these quarterbacks to get in a rhythm. You know, only four passing attempts by Chase Bryce, only three passing attempts by Brennan Armstrong so far, and that just does not allow these quarterbacks to find a rhythm early. You see Rump coming back, which is a good sign. At some point, they're just going to have to let the quarterbacks throw the ball. Armstrong's going to look to throw it here as he rolls to his left. Nice right on target that time to Kemp. <laughs> Chris, doesn't that look kind of weird rolling out to the left? I mean, it, you don't see very many lefty quarterbacks playing football. And you know, we talked to Tony Polgen. He said he, he was wondering the entire camp, how come the ball was coming to him weird? And, then he realizes he's getting a lefty quarterback thrown the, the ball. The opposite way, spinning the opposite way. You wouldn't think it would make a difference, but every receiver will tell you it makes a huge difference, and you got to get used to it. Part of this strange offseason, there's Paul Jan right there, where 
you know, the quarterback and the receivers don't have all the reps, don't have all the time together. So it's, it makes it even that much more difficult when you're talking about new quarterbacks for both of these teams. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And I think it's interesting, too, especially when you're transferring in. A lot of transfers that are going to make a difference on this UVA offense. Just I think the extra couple weeks they had with the delayed games helped them get in a rhythm. Second down and seven. Plenty of time. This time hits Kemp again over the middle, past midfield, and into Duke territory with another Virginia first down. Now they're getting things going. <laughs> you talk about the team height for Virginia. One dude who's not very tall is Billy Kemp. He was only 5'9". He kind of ducked under that tackle by a taller 6'4", Shaka Hayward. He's a guy who's you know, really they need him to step up in that slot position. As he's Dubois vacated that. And Joe Reed, and he's the guy who can fill in and do a great job just like that for this UVA offense. Armstrong, the fake to Talapapa. Pressure comes off the edge. Nice job just sliding it back to Kemp, picking up what he can. Nate Thompson on the stop for two. Quick, quick, quick feet at the top of the route. Got inside the defender and... I mean, you saw Brennan Armstrong just throwing a little sidearm pass. He's got that ability to get the ball where he needs it. Talapapa. Three tough yards in the middle. Rumpf is there back in the game after the mild injury. Making the stop. Third down and four. Entire playbook open here for Virginia. Nine eighty one two Lavelle Davis Jr. Six mm -hmm. seven wide out it's in the game now, maybe for a jump ball. You see Duke's defense walking around. They can bring pressure from anywhere. Tyler pop out of the backfield, and he can't quite squeeze it. Then we talked to Coach Mendenhall about Tyler Papa earlier in the week. He only had five catches all of last year, despite being really the bell cow in that backfield. Yeah, they want to get the ball to the running backs more out of the backfield. In situations just like that, when you can get five guys out, you don't necessarily have to block as long because you have an open receiver. And in plus territory right now, they're putting a lot on Brandon Armstrong's shoulders trying to pick up this first down on fourth and four. They're Talapapa and Terrell Jan in the backfield. Now Jan in motion. Armstrong looking that way. Instead, he goes to a secondary read. And it's incomplete, and Duke will take over. You see that little bit of lack of confidence by Brandon Armstrong on that throw. His first option, Terrell Janet to the flat, was taken away nicely by the defensive back and just wasn't able to find that confident throwing lane to get the ball to Tony Poljan for the first down. And... Virginia is, is a team that a lot of questions coming into this season. They were picked to finish ninth in the ACC after winning the Coastal Division last year. And the big question is that quarterback position losing losing Bryce Perkins from a year ago. Now Bryce pressure comes, does get rid of it, but wasn't able to get anything on it right off the edge. Joey Blunt from that safety spot putting pressure on Chase Bryce. Yeah, they're bringing pressure from all over the place. And you see the three guys coming off the edge right there. Joey Blunt, Noah Taylor, and Zane Zandier. All of these guys are so good at getting to the, the quarterback. Impossible to block all three at one time. Take to Jackson. He stays in the block. So Bryce has a little bit more time, but a floater. Is it a catch? Did he grab it? It looks like he did. Pankall says he caught it. And now the officials are coming in and saying it was incomplete. That was up for grabs. Or down. It was, and there was man-to-man -man coverage on the back end. And the only reason that wasn't picked off was because all the defenders' eyes were on their receivers. Didn't have enough time to turn around. That's interesting. Yeah, you know, they'll take another look at this, Mark. Yes. Yeah, Nickel definitely thought he had it. He's obviously going to think he had it. To go for it. Line up to go. If I was Duke, I wouldn't be in such a hurry, but they are. Rice over the head of his receiver. He's a little off target. As he tried saw, to get it to Daryl yeah. Harding Jr. Yeah, and we saw that a lot the first two games. You, you, you don't get the, the right 
footwork. You don't step into your throw and you sail the ball high. It's a decent route. The only problem is, is even if he caught that route, he still wouldn't have gotten the first down. You need to run the route to the correct yard line, plant your foot in the ground, and turn back to the quarterback. And right now, Dave Cudcliffe, and he's just known for being kind of a wizard with these quarterbacks. He's coaching up Chase Bryce on the fly. Real life game time situation. Second, second straight three and out for Duke, and Virginia takes back over. Let's take another look at the, let's take a look rather. The way the ACC is going to play itself out this year, no divisions this season. So the top two teams at the end of the season will play for the ACC title on either the 12th or 19th of December. And the way things are shaping up, I, I got to think it's going to be the 19th because more and more teams are starting to schedule games on the 12th. And Notre Dame joins for a full season this year, so eligible for that ACC title game. And uh, they promise to be in the mix by the end of the year. And I like it. I mean, I just, I like it. I think it's a great compromise that the ACC made during this pandemic. It also makes for some really good weeks of football. I mean, you're just watching very competitive games as a fan week in and week out. There's Terrell Janna making his first catch of the day at 74 last year. Along with that tr the trio of he and Joe Reed and Hasis Dubois, now so much more on his shoulders, the Canadian senior out of Vancouver. Duke showed pressure on that hard count, changed up the play on offense. Pressure coming up the middle. Armstrong gets rid of it. He didn't really have a receiver in the area. Derek Tangelo broke free up the middle. Yeah, dude. Good job by Duke. I mean, they showed the pressure. They showed their hand a little bit early, and you saw the check. They're going to have an alert check. Brandon Armstrong signaled out to Lavelle Davis. Just go long. Get your big 6'7 body going and just couldn't complete the pass because the pressure got there too quick. Rump and Demu Cage at the top of the screen, both on the same side of the ball. I believe that we get five out are going to chip to that side. Need a snap, they get it off on third down. Armstrong quickly. He misfires too as Kent came out of his break. He was open. He couldn't connect with his quarterback. And another three and out. So this looks like a lot of bad quarterback play on both sides of the ball. However, there has been some really good defense going on on the back end by both of these teams. Marquise Waters may have gotten beat on there, but held up Kemp just enough to not be able to come down with that. Yeah, to be fair, Kemp got tripped up a little bit by Waters. Wasn't able to completely get out of his break clean. Another punting situation. Nash Griffin. Runners are getting a workout today. The low line was going to take a neutral bounce and killed by the Cavaliers. Saw Tony Poljan for Virginia getting involved in the offense, as did Noah Gray. Both these tight ends, both 87, and both outstanding players. Yeah, Noah Gray, 51 receptions last year. That's second in all of Power 5 amongst tight ends. He led the ACC. He has 14 straight games with two receptions. I mean, he is a prime target for this offense, no matter who's that quarterback. Had 10 catches in two games coming into this game. Durant now on the carry. Just lowers his shoulder. Good, strong run by Durant. Picks up almost four on first down. Jackson's a little slow to get up. Hobbling a little bit. But those four yard runs on first down are going to be big in terms of gaining momentum for this Duke offense. And again, now he has a much bigger hole on the left side before Zandir closes it up. But it'll bring up a third manageable, third and three. Although I say that, although they haven't been converting very many of these third manageables. No, you need to start converting them. But you know, good thing Zane Zandir did get there for this UVA defense because the offensive line for Duke has been pushing around the guys up front, getting the ball to that second level. Empty backfield here on third down. Both teams combined one for nine on third down. There's a conversion right there, finding the big tight end, Noah Gray. To me, that's the play call on third and three. Quick stop route, little out route off the leverage 
of the linebacker. And it's interesting, they were playing a cover two trap where they had Devontae Cross sat, sit up on the outside. You saw a mandatory release by the outside receiver to go to the outside, spun around Devontae Carter, give enough time. But so Nick Jackson, See, yeah, limping off a little bit. It's not a good sign. Sophomore linebacker out of Atlanta. Favoring right leg. Giving a thumbs up to the sideline, let people know he's you know, probably okay. But you know, he, he's replacing Jordan Mack, who was you know, pretty much Mr. Everything for UVA at that linebacker position last year. Was really impressed by his play. His teammates were coming into this year, finishing last year strong. And uh, got banged up a little bit the play before, but as he does that up and under, can't tell whether it was lingering from the previous play or if he rolled it up there, but looks like it could be an ankle. Josh Ahern taking his spot for now. John Jackson spins out of a tackle, but his <laughs> he was just positioned after he got out of Zandier's tackle. Joey Blunt was right there for him, a tackle, and there was nothing Dion Jackson could do about it. Joey Blunt's a guy who you know, feels like he has something to prove this year. He entered last season as a preseason All-ACC guy. And his dad was a safety at UVA. And he's a guy who he didn't have as great a season last year as he wanted, but he's already started this one off in a great way. Pressure picked up over the middle. That's going to be a score. Marweedy is going to take it to the house for Duke. Jake Marweedy with his first catch of the year, and it's six. Marweedy, a big tight end. He's back up to Noah Gray, but they really like his speed and his height. He's 6'6", 245. They call him a very physical tight end. And he just got in behind the linebackers. You see Matt Gam dropping back in a cover three. And no post safety help. We just were singing Joey Blunt's, Blunt's praises, but he might have been down early or... That game had to carry one of those two things, but miscommunication by this UVA defense led to a led to a big score. 55 yards. Bryce to Marweedy. Chase Bryce's first touchdown pass as a member of the Duke Blue Devils. It's a big one here because it gives his team a 10-point cushion late in the first quarter in Charlottesville. The line up in that tight end flex position you see in the slot to the top of your screen as he starts this route good job stemming inside and then flattening it out see Joey Blunt lean so far over to the side of Javante Robertson the wide receiver at the bottom of the screen that just absolutely no coverage over the top miscommunication and Nick Howell I mean, he was so confident in his defense he feels like he has an entire playbook in and you know, one of the things about having to prepare for four different opponents is they, they basically have seen every single combination of playbook. And really, uh, just a blown assignment on that one. Going to have to look hard at that communication. The Duke has scored their largest lead of the season in two games and a quarter. Largely on the strength of their defense early on in this game. And with the kickoff into the end zone, and Simpson decides to take a knee for a touchback. What do you think Bronco Mendenhall is thinking? Last time he was on this field, it was a big-time celebration after they broke that 15-game losing streak to Virginia Tech. And the delayed start mark to the season has to be playing on you a little bit. It has to affect you in some way. Yeah, you know, anytime you have a, a, a season opener, usually the other team also has a season opener, so you're kind of inexperienced together. But I think a lot of the things that are happening right now is you're seeing you know, what that live game speed looks like to your first time starting quarterback. Armstrong with the give to Simpson. As you mentioned before, Mark, the transfer from Towson. Picks up a good four yards on first down. Yeah, UVA seems to be going fast. Final minute of this first quarter. Armstrong, Poljan, tries to break free of a tackle, cannot, but he picks up a first down. Lummy Young was there to make the stop. More routes like that for Brennan Armstrong. 
You get a guy to the flat, a guy crossing, and a tight end setting up right over the ball. It confuses zone defenses. Getting rhythm throws like that is going to get him confidence building throughout this game. Ball start on the 69. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still first down. Chris Glazer moved a little bit early on that offensive line for Virginia. Very experienced unit. Yeah, they are experienced. And you know, one thing that I do want to see them improve on this year is just you know, those first and second down run games. They didn't have a ton of success on first and second down when their running backs were running the ball last year. Without Bryce Perkins back there, you, you can no longer do quarterback draws on third and 13. Telepapa spins his way out of a tackle, powering his way forward. Picks up seven yards. That might be the last play of this first quarter, and it is. Surprising start by the road team. The Duke Blue Devils coming in here into Charlottesville. 0-2 on the year, but on the opening kickoff, they forced a fumble, converted that into three, and then Marwini, the backup tight end, goes 55 yards. Blue Devils by 10 after one. Scheduling announcement. Thanks to a scheduling change, we're going to have Friday Night Lights next Friday. Wake Forest hosting Campbell in Winston-Salem. Coverage starts at 7 o'clock Eastern right here on the ACC Network. Armstrong keeping it himself. Again, showing what he can do on the ground, Mark. This kid in his freshman year in high school had a game where he threw for 300 and ran for 200. He wasn't he like 14 years old. I mean, yeah, 14 yeah, we, years old. <laughs> that's incredible. I mean, and it's in Northern about. Ohio. Like Shelby, that, their football powerhouse up there, and the, the football is is really good in that part of the country. Yeah, so you know, he's no stranger to you know pressure moments. You can tell that when you talk to him. He just he composes himself and has such confidence in the way you know he carries himself. He's going to tuck it and run here. No, now he throws. Keeps his head upfield and finds a receiver. That's Lavelle Davis, the freshman, making his first catch as a member of the Virginia Cavaliers. Yeah, finally. I think it's the third or fourth time he's gone to Lavelle Davis. This time he actually got to plant his feet. These are, I mean, just look at the length of that wide receiver. And the comeback route's not a tall receiver's friend, but good job setting up in the open space. Talapapa. Picks up a couple. Nice play by Marquise Waters on from the backside. Yeah, Marquise Waters, he had a tough game last week. He was tasked with covering Hunter Long, the tight end from Boston College last week. And, you know, pretty good coverage. But Hunter Long made some absolutely amazing catches. And, you know, we talked to the coaching staff. He said Marquise Waters just, I mean, he just wants to get out and play again. And he has started well in this game. Fake to Simpson. Armstrong will look to throw, and both the receiver and the defender fell down. Billy Kemp was the one he was going to. Carter, Mike Carter, out of that strong safety position, one of the team captains for this new team on the coverage. Chris Rook got an explosive get off the line of scrimmage and wound up right at the feet of Brennan Armstrong. Now third down, and it seems like Armstrong's been either using his legs or going to Lavelle Davis in this situation. That time Rump was a little too explosive, it seems. <laughs> yeah, a little too explosive. It Brendan Armstrong right on cue, even though the ball was uh, blown dead, threw a bomb to Lavelle Davis down the sideline. Offside, defense, with contact. Five-yard penalty, so third down. Kind of like Smart play by Armstrong. Explosive. He knew he had Rump yeah. chopped yeah. a bit, didn't he? Yeah, you, know, you feel like you got the you know, ice a kicker, you call timeout, they kick it anyways just to get it in rhythm. We'll throw it out in there to the wide receiver, get in the rhythm. Third down and three for Virginia now. In motion is Keaton Thompson, the quarterback transfer from Mississippi State, getting some time at wide receiver, so keep an eye on 99. The rare now number the 99 slot. at wide receiver. Yeah. We give those to Talapapa, picks up the first down. Talk about you know, the numbers. You're going to see a bunch of wacky numbers or unusual numbers by guys at different positions. And Ethan Thompson's a guy who transferred in from Mississippi State as a dual threat quarterback, and they're using him all over the field, sometimes a wide receiver. But 
In this Bronco Mendenhall system, you have to earn your numbers. And as a transfer, he earned his number a little bit late. And so wound up at 99 at quarterback. That's pretty cool, though. If I had to have one of those random numbers, I think that's one I'd like to have as a quarterback. Armstrong has room. Tries to leap a defender. Can't get out of the grasp of number 23, Lummy Young. But he does pick up a first down. First down and goal for Virginia. <laughs> we talked about his confidence, his self-confidence. This is not a move you make if you're unsure about yourself. I mean, really good job trying to go vertical, but talking about shoestring tackle. Lummy Young literally came down with the shoestring. Stopped in short goal line. Talapapa throwing a nice block for Brennan Armstrong on that play to get Virginia now inside the five-yard line. Jan in motion. Fake to Talapapa. He'll lead Armstrong to the goal line and the score. If there were any questions about whether Brennan Armstrong could come in and operate the same offense that Bryce Perkins did last year, those questions have been answered on this drive. Using his legs multiple times, but also setting up his blockers, and he's not going to maybe break a 60, 70-yard run, but those are the options that they have in the red zone with him where they can put points up on the board. Great play design and great call by Robert and I to get him in the end zone. Delaney with the PAT. Armstrong making his first career start for the University of Virginia. Scores. Who is back in the game? Right side of your screen here, you will see number 51, Victor Dibukeji. He was the ACC Defensive Player of the Week last week. Robert and I, the offensive coordinator for Virginia, said Tony Polgin not only can run block, but he can also catch passes, and we see him at the point of attack, driving number 51, Dibu Keiji, off the screen on that touchdown play. That's a great point, Eric. That's exactly what Coach and I was talking about when you talk about Polgin as being a guy who had 33 catches and four touchdowns last year. First thing he said was, yeah, but he can block at the point of attack, and that's what I like the most out of him. Nice job on special teams as Philia Johnson was brought down by Hayden Mitchell. Little spark now for Virginia. Really has been a pretty even battle back and forth. Some struggles early by the quarterbacks. Then opportunistic with big pass by Chase Bryce to Jake Marweedy on the last drive. Hopefully that, you know, that settles in Chase Bryce. That's what Coach Cutcliffe wanted more than anything, for him to gain confidence in his arm and just let it let it fly. Deion Jackson gets three yards, the senior out of Atlanta. In his high school ball at Pace Academy. Jameer Carter with the stop. True freshman for Virginia. If you're a true freshman and you earn your number and you get playing time, that's saying something here at Virginia on that defensive front. Gain some respect from the old guys for sure. Second down and seven. Bryce now to pass, steps up. He'll be dropped. Noah Taylor. Carter gets a half sack as well. To bring up third and long. Oh, Noah Taylor comes off the edge, even gets chipped by Deion Jackson. Great job using his hands, working inside. I love what Noah Taylor does off the edge for this team and whenever you get number seven and number 11 standing up on the edge like you see here you better watch out offensively and get the ball out of your hands fast empty backfield for chase bryce here comes the pressure backs up try to connect with bobo just over his head bobo couldn't clear the defender in time and you could be forced to punt yeah noah taylor got the pressure on that second down play and you look over to him again, they dropped him back in coverage, just used him as a decoy and allowed Charles Snowden to come off the other side. So when you have so many guys that can create so much defensively as UVA does, really multiple in what you can do in terms of creating a rush on the quarterback. Tavares Kelly back to receive this Porter Wilson kick. Fair catch made at his own 47. That's where Virginia will take over when we come back. Down three.
A new edition of the Crowns at UVA is the memorial to enslaved laborers. It's meant to acknowledge over 5,000 individuals who built and sustained life at UVA between 1817 and the end of the Civil War. Constructed of local grant, the memorial's wall contains known and unknown names of those who worked on the grounds. Here's Eric with more on this story, Eric. Wide receiver Terrell Janna will be playing this season without a nameplate on the back of his jersey, and that's to bring significance to those listed on the memorial whose last name was not even listed. He has the full support of his head coach, Bronco Mendenhall, as well as the rest of the university, which means a tremendous amount to him. Yeah, thanks, Eric. That's really good. Uh, a great way for Terrell Janna and some others. They've decided to uh, raise awareness in such a manner. I, I love it. Big play here by Shane Simpson. Gets into the second level and into due territory. Yeah, and I love what, you know, the reasoning behind what Janet, why Janet did that. He said, you know, your motto at UVA is family first, last, and always. And, you know, he said, for me, Janet is my name. It's my family name. It's my history. And to see so many people on that wall with no last name, he really felt for them and wanted to kind of remove that name from him to, to show homage to them. Armstrong trying to find his Young receiver, that's for Sean Henry, actually. That's a senior Tran transfer from St. Francis. One of the guys that Coach Mendenhall told us to keep an eye on. Again, 6'3". Everybody's 6'3". <laughs> you're short if you're 6'3 on this UVA team. <laughs> you really are. I mean, 6'3 is like a commonplace. Chris, you could not walk around that locker room. You would uh, so stick out a sore thumb. Be Sorry. brutal. Armstrong going to keep it again. Dances his way to pick up just a couple. And he gets something out of it. Then Fry there to make the stop for the Blue Devils. You see, uh, you know, Brandon Armstrong. Yeah, I think he's settling in a little bit now. And, and you After saw what he was able to do. Foul, unnecessary roughness. Number nine, defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. Yeah, just quickly on that. Mark Denard yep. Woods with the penalty. And that's going to. You know, when you're on the road and you're trying to spring the upset and the other team has a little momentum, why give them any more? Yeah, that's no bueno. No bueno for sure. But you, you, you look at that last drive, and Brennan Armstrong, so often you get quarterbacks that you'll know, have the ability to run and have the ability to pass. You can either do, either do short passes to get them in rhythm or let them use their legs early so they have that confidence of that second outlet. I think that using his legs helped his passing confidence in that last drive. Plenty of time in the pocket. Connecting with number 13, Terrell Janna. Spoke about him. Young man out of Vancouver. Really getting into a rhythm right now. You know, we talked about the struggles on third down at one point in time. Both teams combined one for nine on third down. Quarterbacks, not either one of them, get into a rhythm. Right now, it looks like Armstrong is the one that's really starting to put together first a scoring drive, now in the midst of what could be a second scoring drive here as we get close to the red zone. Talapapa, straight up the middle, has room. Inside the 10, bangs his way inside the 5, down to the 3. That is what this offensive line is going to be fueled by this entire season. They're returning a bunch of guys up front. But when you can watch your running back scream past you and break tackles, watch Telepapa lift his feet up on contact, break through some of these tackles. You know, he's from Laia, Hawaii, and... When he was back during the pandemic in the offseason, you know, he would run on the beaches of Hawaii like he did in high school, learning how to pick his feet back up through that thick sand. Picking his feet here, trying to get to the end zone. And he stood up just shy. Close to two tacklers there at the one-yard line. Having run that uh, Coco Head rail trail on Oahu, that is tough. And you know how I feel about cardio. Oh, yeah. It you know, tricks you. Yes, it does. It's listed as a hike. But then you get there and you realize <laughs> you're just doing Stairmaster all the way yeah. up. But it has a pretty nice view at the top. Beautiful view. A lot of great places to work out. Yeah, training in the offseason on Oahu. Now Armstrong under center. He'll get the Telepapa. Tries to find his way to the end zone and does. Just wrestles his way across that goal line. 12 touchdowns on the ground last year for Talapapa. And the Hawaiian native gets his first of 2020. Shaka Hayward fills this gap nicely, but that leg drive by Talapapa gets him into the end zone. And 
Looks like those beach workouts might have, must have worked. That Coco Head Trail, Chris, I used to spend some time in Hawaii during my off seasons, and I would be climbing up that mountain, pretending that uh, that was good enough cardio for me too. It worked. And Talapapa has got to be fired up after getting in the end zone on this rush, driving his feet and driving his UVA offense into this end zone. straight points for Virginia. They've taken a 14-10 lead over Duke here in their opener for 2020. After a COVID postponement, a rivalry game with their uh, opponents from Blacksburg, Virginia Tech postponed until December 12th, so they're opening up this week after teams like Duke have already played two games. Maybe a little bit of a slow start for Virginia, but a couple of touchdowns on the board, and they lead. going to sail right out of the back of the end zone off the toe of Brian Delaney and you know, Mark, it's a Duke team with Chase Bryce who they've had their issues offensively and it looks like they're continuing here even though they were able to get the 10-0 lead and convert a turnover into points early uh, Chase Bryce hasn't been sharp and other than one really big play to the big tight end, the Marweedy, the backup tight end, they haven't gotten much going offensively Yeah, they haven't and Chase Bryce talked about you know, one thing that he really wanted to focus on going into this game was spreading the ball around, getting into a bunch of different receivers and going through his progression. So far, he only has one reception to a wide receiver. His other three completions have been to the tight end, so he needs to start getting more people involved in this pass game or else he can get out of hand quick. They give the Waters now. Jordan Waters in that tailback spot for Duke. And Jackson back in the game. That's good news for Virginia. Nick Jackson and Charles Snowden combined to make the stop. You see Snowden come off the edge, slow played a little bit, but his length, I mean, you know, he talks about his 6'7 wingspan and how beneficial it is to not only drop in coverage and just take up space, but being able to slow play those read options, get to the quarterback or the running back. Bryce with time, has a receiver, the 45, makes a move outside. That's Phil Yaw Johnson. And another big play for Duke, so they're using big plays to move the chains, and this one will be now back into Virginia territory. Last year, Duke didn't cross the 50-yard line. Mark Dewey not did the game until midway through the third quarter when the punter fumbled the staff and picked up and ran for his life. <laughs> yeah, this is, game is obviously different than that one. Chase Bryce, good job finding his open receiver. Waters. Cuts it back into the teeth of that defense. Jackson is going to make about 100 tackles today. Yeah, he is. He's in on, it. He's in on it every play. He is. You look at kind of the wave of white jerseys moving forward, and this offensive line is pushing around the D line, but they're just not climbing up to linebackers, and they're able to get in there for three-yard stops. Give again to Waters up the middle. Has some room. Down to the 30. It'll bring up third down and one. Snowden on the tackle this time for Virginia. Yeah, and I'm just waiting for Chase Bryce to pull the ball on one of these read options because you have Charles Snowden and Noah Taylor crashing in from the outside. It's going to be open at some point in this game. This time Jackson lowers his shoulder. He picks up the first down, still churning his feet. So a good answer for Duke in getting the ball into Virginia territory and keeping this drive alive. Seven minutes now to go in this first half. Bryce with a fresh set of downs. Pressure coming off the edge. He steps up, throws to the end zone, has a receiver just overthrowing Noah Gray. That's the right look. You see your tight end matched up against a smaller nickelback. As we see Duke, you know, come and you just got to pick up this protection. Really good job by Deion Jackson stepping up and blocking the blitzing linebacker off the edge. Chase Bryce is kind of double clutched. He said he does not have the real chemistry with a lot of these wide receivers because he missed so much time due to that COVID. This time, 
Matt Gam brought the pressure. They've got so many linebackers on this team. And they rotate him and they keep him fresh. And I think that, that's one of the issues with a 3-4 defense around the country. You don't see it as much because it's just difficult to find linebackers that can not only cover but rush the passer. And UVA has had a knack of recruiting some really good ones. There you see Cam, 56 on the edge. Third down and 10 for Duke. Pressure again comes from Virginia. I think Rice will be dropped. This time it's Richard Burney who picks it up. Richard Burney is a guy... He was probably the most productive guy in this offseason. They have a tradition where they get to break a rock, which is the idea of starting to chop down a mountain. He was the one to break the rock at the end of this summer training, had probably the best training camp and showing on the field. Fourth, Fourth and 13. Yeah. Not a lot of faith in the kicker, doesn't look like right now. Right at the, at the edge of his range, so... Coach Cutcliffe opting to go for it on 4th and 13. Virginia will bring pressure again. This time Bryce, Bryce escapes. Tries to go downfield, and it's incomplete. Nick Grant was there on coverage. Really no chance on that play. No, and really no chance because it was a very tentative throw by Chase Bryce. He needs to get that confidence and sling it in there. UVA gets the ball, and we come back. Thank you, Jordan. Back here in Charlottesville. Virginia up 14-10 over Duke. Kemp on the end around. That constitutes a pass, actually, from Armstrong. Good gain on first down. Yeah, one area that Duke is really hurting at right now is that cornerback position. Their two top guys, Mark Gilbert and Josh Blackwell, are out for this game, both undergoing surgery this past week. Gilbert has a foot injury and Blackwell a torn meniscus in his knee not sure when or if those guys will be back but it doesn't look like Brandon Armstrong's really picked on the corners too much and the backups have been playing well stacked formation here and back in Armstead backup quarterback lining up at receiver on the receiving end so you have 98 Armstead and 99 Thompson two backup quarterbacks that will also line up as, as a receiver from time to time uh, Armstead's a true freshman from South Bend, Indiana, right here in Notre Dame, and he's a guy who has size and speed and length, and he'll be a good player for them in the future. Fresh set of downs for Virginia. Armstrong, plenty of time over the middle, hits his tight end, Poljan. That's a first down. Lots of time for Armstrong. That is a tough throw to make. You saw him put that ball in between. The two linebackers, look from his point of view, there's just a slight opening right there where he can place it in. Really good route, good timing. Talk about timing, how important it is. You've got a transfer tight end and a first-year starting quarterback. They are on the same page right now. Jimmy Simpson dances his way to try and pick a hole. Gets three on first down. Interesting about this transfer tight end. He was actually a starting quarterback at Central Michigan. He, he was a high school quarterback, baseball player, basketball player, a thousand points in basketball. And I mean, just incredible in terms of what he is in terms of a physical specimen and athlete. Made that conversion over tight end and is finding a niche nicely in this offense. In the first two years was a quarterback and a tight end at Central Michigan. Simpson. Good room to roam. First down for Virginia. His last three drives for Virginia. He really starting to apply the pressure on this Duke defense. Yeah, they are. They're getting good combination blocks by their offensive line up front. Saw Ola Shigun up front and come off that double team on the nose guard and climb up to the linebackers. You can do that. You can spring to the next level and break those 10, 15 yard runs. Keaton Thompson, top of your screen, split wide. Talapapa, spinning. Still turning his feet. Still going. Big run by Talapapa. Well, 
Another first down for Virginia. They're rolling a little bit right now. Good blocks up front by the offensive line. 72, Svoboda getting an extra push. It's a 6'10", 325-pound offensive lineman pushing the forward. You better fall forward. Duke calling a timeout as the defense clearly on their heels. They've spent a long time on the field here in this first half. Yeah, they have, and they're getting a little bit winded. Look at, uh, you know, really tell Papa there just made a lot of improvements. He knew this was going to be his year, his team, coming back with a couple opt-outs at that running back position. Yeah. Time now for our food line, food for thought. Mark, Virginia's really starting to pile up yards on the ground. Yeah, they have, and you see Shane Simpson, the transfer coming in, making some, some waves in the backfield. You know, and then him and Talapapa have kind of been a one-two punch. Talked to Robert and I, the offensive coordinator. He said, you know, all of my running backs bring something a little bit different. Talapapa might be one of the more that Grinder and Simpson uh, maybe more shifty out of the backfield, but both are productive. Simpson now trying to bounce outside. Nice job on the tackle by Duke. Number 39, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, yeah. his corner spot. You just talked about the two starting corners that are out. Lewis made a nice tackle. Yeah, he did. You know, you want to you want to force the ball to the corner, try to make him make the tackle. But good job by Lewis. You know, this is his first start. You know, coach said he had really high football IQ. He's very consistent in camp, but just weren't wasn't sure how he would perform. Good tackle on that play to save a touchdown. You saw 129 yards on the ground for Virginia after a slow start, starting to get cooking. Second down and ten here. Armstrong rolling to his left. Going to the end zone. Try to put it up top. It's one of his shortest receivers, Billy Kemp. Funny, we talked to talked to Brandon Armstrong just, you know, kind of a, about how different it is, you know, for some of these wide receivers and, and tight ends that, that he is a lefty. And you're running some of these routes to the opposite side of the field that you're normally used to running them when you have a lefty rolling out to the left is a bit different. Third down and long. They really need to at least get it to the four-yard line for a first down. Just under two minutes to go in this first half. Duke coming with some pressure now. Going to one of his tall receivers in the corner of the end zone. As the receiver and the cornerback battled for position, LaBelle Davis was down there fighting for it with Leonard Johnson, who played a lot last year. Was sort of, you know, 1A and 1B on that cornerback spot. Yeah, and he got, he got away with a little tug on the jersey, and sometimes when you're the bigger wide receiver, the bigger man out there, you don't get all those calls. But a uh, really good job by Leonard Johnson filling in. And again, you're going against a, a much taller guy and doing what you need to do to knock the ball away, bring up fourth down. 32-yard attempt, and Brian Delaney, he's hit 13 straight going back to last year. Then make it 14 straight. Virginia now up seven. Hey, be really sure to tune in tomorrow for Sunday Best here on the ACC Network. Starts with a women's field hockey doubleheader at noon Eastern. Wake Forest and Virginia followed by Duke Louisville. Then it's a classic women's soccer rivalry as number one North Carolina faces number seven Duke at 3.30. Sunday Best right here on the ACC Network. And also, as always, on that ESPN app. Look at Cutcliffe right here. He has an opportunity that's talked about a lot when you watch the New England Patriots play. Score at the end of the half and then get the ball back to start the second half. Remember that fumble that UVA had on that opening kickoff. Really nullified them getting that ball first. But if Duke wants to... You know, change the momentum of this game. It's so important now. They just come away with some points. A field goal is fine because you get that momentum going to the locker room and come back out and get the ball again with another shot. Then you see Jordan Waters deep for Duke. Out of the 
back of the end zone. Goes to Laney's kick. Touchback for the Blue Devils. They'll have a minute 50 in Chase Bryce. See if he can improve on his 5 of 14 days so far. Pitching the ball. Sometimes these situations are opportunities for young, inexperienced quarterbacks because you stop thinking about all the play calls and you start doing plays that you've practiced over and over again. Coaches are consistently getting scripts going for two-minute drives, and a lot of times you see quarterbacks find their rhythm passing the ball when they get put in these hurry-up two-minute drives. Let's see if Chase Bryce can settle down and do that to end this half. Pass and the slant dangerous for his hand here. Thought he might have had a beat on that one. He's trying to get it to Calhoun. Through a lot of hands. Similar play. This time he connects with Dennis Smith. Opening up third and five. Now Virginia will call a timeout. They're thinking if they get a stop here, Mark, they might be able to put more points on the board before we go to break. Timeout, Virginia. That's their first timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. Virginia really wants to keep the ball in front of them defensively. At this point in the game, yes, a stop right here would be great and get the ball back to get. You live with a first down, but you just don't get beat behind the defense. Right now, Dave Cutler talking to his quarterback, Chase Bryce, and going through his progressions, talking to him about on this play, this is your first read, this is your second read, and this is the clock that needs to be going off in your head. And once that clock goes off, put your foot in the ground, either throw it or run to try to get this first down. Chase Bryce, the transfer from Clemson, famous, of course, for... Converting on the fourth down pass when Trevor Lawrence was injured. Keeping Clemson's national title hopes alive. Appeared in 25 games as a member of the Clemson Tigers. He's in graduate school right now at Duke. There was that victory back in 2018. A young man from Grayson, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. And his first career start at Notre Dame earlier this year. A lot of players from his hometown and some of the schools around there on this Duke team. Timeout. Another timeout. Virginia. That's their second timeout. 30-second timeout. Well, the Cavaliers, and yeah, obviously he didn't like what they saw coming out of that timeout, called another one to set up for this big third down. Yeah, and you know, you saw him coming out in empty formation and saw man-to-man -man across the board. They were going to send pressure with some off coverage by the defensive backs, and you saw D'Angelo Amos, his Really, his second free safety in there, man to man on Noah Gray in the slot, and that's a mismatch. And, and you know, see if he changes it up or if he sticks with that man to man pressure. Eric Wood, what do you got for us? Yeah, left tackle. We've seen some rotation. Casey Holman, the normal starter, has been rotating in and out. He's in on this series. David Cutcliffe may not like what he sees from his offensive line so far in this game. Chase Bryce has been hurried on a number of his throws against these two talented pass rushers on the outside. Now at third and four, let's see if Virginia brings pressure. They do, stunting on the outside, but Bryce has time. Will he make a pay? And a great interception! D'Angelo <laughs> Amos with a great pick, and Virginia set up once again in Duke territory. Well, D'Angelo Amos was no longer on the tight end, Noah Gray. The Duke switched their offensive formation to the other side, which created a different matchup, but D'Angelo Amos sat off the ball, read the route, and broke downhill on that pass. See him on the right side of the screen, just really coming in behind that deep slant route. Well, we enough air under the ball for Chase Bryce. Big turnover for UVA. Viewing the play to see if Amos came down with it. Transfers all over the field making an impact. You know, there are two of them on this Virginia defense that transferred in from James Madison. JMU, just a powerhouse FCS team as they review this play, but 
You've got Amos and you've got uh, Di Bataro on that defensive line transferring in from James Madison. And, you know, you talk to the Virginia coaches, Mark, we did this week about how much of a jump that is, and they really didn't think it was that big of a jump because of the high level of football played by JMU year in and year out. Yeah, and JMU is consistently playing ACC teams, you know, in terms of their non-conference schedule. So they really That's analyzed the, the film. On the field is confirmed. Now, Virginia. And confirmed that, yep. And they talked about, you know, they, they really analyzed the play against ACC opponents, and, and they thought that both of these players could make an impact at this level already. D'Angelo Amos showing why he was a first-team FCS All-American. Big interception. Really cut off any momentum Duke had going into half. And now with a minute 33 left to go in this first half, and all the momentum with Virginia. Brennan Armstrong, an opportunity to put more points on the board. He's back to pass. Going for Jana. Couldn't hook up. Had two receivers in the area. Davis was also out there for the Hoots. Nice coverage by Jalen Alexander. Was good coverage on the play. And I was impressed by UVA's offensive line on that one. They picked up a pressure. Duke brought six rushers, left man to man on the outside. And when we talked to Brandon Armstrong. He was so impressed by watching his offensive line pick up the pressures against Clemson all the way back in last year's ACC championship game. He knew he had confidence in these guys. Talapapa now out of the backfield, over the middle, tried to hook up with Jana again. No doing, Alexander was there again for Duke. Well, you better be careful or they're going to give Duke the ball back with another opportunity before it happened. Wait, wait, possessions have been going this game, a lot of back and forth. And yeah. Big third down and 10, Duke gets a stop here. They have that same opportunity to put points on the board before halftime. Right, the three and outs could be back. Third and 10 for Armstrong and the Cavaliers. Talapapa there to pick up the blitz. Now Armstrong going deep down the left side. Another fantastic job in coverage. And it's intercepted by Duke. Leonard Johnson is there to get the football back to the Blue Devils. Leonard Johnson, such a good job. You see, he was being carried off the field handcuffed for stealing, which is UVA's move. But why, you know, look at the pressure. Good job initially by the offensive line, but then Dwayne Carter just leaks through. Such a good job in coverage, not biting on the double move, understanding the yard to gain, and then going up and high-pointing the football. He's a, he's a guy who is just a natural athlete. He holds the Duke defensive back record for squats and power cleans, so you saw him get up and high point that football. Love it. Now Chase Bryce with a minute 17 left to go. What will Duke opt to do here deep in their own territory? Bryce comes out firing. Complete to Robertson, the true freshman. Joey Blunt makes the stop after Robinson picks up just a handful. Clock continues to run. I like the play call. I mean, I like a couple screen plays thrown in there to wide receivers, to running backs. Easy completions for your quarterback. Now you got to move the ball downfield. Three timeouts, though, for Duke. Virginia continuing to bring just four. Price underneath. Calhoun with the catch. Spins forward. Pick up positive yardage. Does pick up the first down. Pressure picked up by Jackson. All flooded a little bit out of his hands. Snowden was there to bring pressure for Virginia. Now the clock stops with the incompletion. 34 seconds left to go. Indecisive. I don't know. Miscommunication on that route, obviously, but. See, get the consistent pressure, and UVA is only bringing four guys right now, dropping everybody else back in coverage. Playing so far off these wide receivers, maybe a quick out route to just to set up third and short. Nice flush. Now he'll be sacked. Noah Taylor got to him. You cannot double clutch when you're in empty sets. You only have five blockers and just way too long. You're not helping your offensive line out at all by providing that much. I know Eric Wood would be very disappointed in his quarterback for not getting the ball out fast. <laughs> and now but Duke yeah. opting, yeah, opting to just let the clock run out here in this first half, Mark. Yeah, big sack by Noah Taylor. Noah Taylor just 
He's going to be all over the field this entire season. We, we saw you know, one of the all-time greats in Isaiah Simmons last year for Clemson doing safety, linebacker, D-line. Noah Taylor is kind of the closest thing you're going to get to Isaiah Simmons this year, and he can line up literally anywhere, especially with some of the injuries to the defensive backfield last year. Coaches used him in a variety of different ways and feel like they really have a grasp on how they can use this budding talent. Yeah, Duke used a fumble on the opening kickoff by Virginia to put points on the board. They added a long touchdown pass and had a 10-0 lead in this game before Virginia, playing in their first game of the season, really woke up offensively. And Brendan Armstrong led three scoring drives and 17 unanswered points, and that's where we stand right now. 17-10. Duke's still in the game, but they've got to figure something out offensively as they go to the break with 150 yards of total offense and 55 of those on the one scoring passing play to Marweedy. Here in Charlottesville, we can send you to the studio in a little bit, but first, Eric Wood is standing by with Bronco Mendenhall. Coach, your guys got off to a slow start today. Do you attribute that to the amount of time without playing an actual game? It's, it's hard to say. I, I think so. Um, either way, we still have to secure the ball. Prior to the two-minute drill, you seem to have found your identity on offense with Armstrong and a quarterback. Is that true, Coach? I think we're closer. Uh, we need to capitalize on the turnovers, on the field position that we have. But there was uh, a few drives in there where we found our rhythm and a little bit more balance. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, thanks, Eric. Yeah, 129 yards on the ground for Virginia after the slow start. And Armstrong, 11 to 25 for 101 yards in that one pick in the first half. Virginia up 17 to 10 at the break. Let's send it to the studio. My guy Jordan Cornett and the crew for the halftime report. Duke got out to an early lead in this game, 10 to nothing, and they take it, took advantage of a turnover on the opening kick. However, Virginia at home, playing their first game of the season, was able to rattle off 17 straight points in the second quarter. And that's where we stand right now with Virginia up seven. Eric Wood had a chance to speak with Coach Cutcliffe coming out of the locker room. What'd you hear, Eric? Yeah, I asked him what his team needs to do to come back and win this game. He put a lot of pressure on the offensive line. He said they need to finish blocks. They need to establish the run game. And he said Virginia's doing a better job of protecting the passer. That's why they're more effective on offense. He also said those quick drives on offense are making his defense tired. So a lot of pressure on the offensive line for the Blue Devils in this second half for Coach Cutcliffe. All right, thank you, Ewood, Chris Cotter, and Mark Herzlick here in the booth for the second half as we're just moments away from kickoff. Duke won the coin toss at the start, so they deferred, and Coach Cutcliffe will have an opportunity to get that offense going here in this second half and keep that defense off the field. And a part of that, too, Mark, clearly is going to be Chase Price and his confidence. He did have the interception in the first half, uh, was able to hit the, the big play with Marweedy, the tight end, to get the touchdown, but just 8 of 20 in that first half and harried a bunch as you would expect from this Virginia defense that loves to put pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, you know, I really anticipate seeing Coach Cutcliffe call you know, some more screen passes out to the wide receivers, some draw plays to his running back, really slow down this pass rush that UVA has. Phil Yaw Johnson only able to get out to about the 16-yard line, so... Duke will be stuck deep in their own territory. I mentioned Duke got, got out on top 10 to nothing. And, you know, for a team that's 0-2, you know, they were going well. And here Marweedy with the score. But this was really all the offense they were able to muster in that first half. Yeah, they took advantage of a couple blown coverages by UVA. But, you know, really, I think the, the story of the first half is how well U, UVA was able to run the ball on the ground, not only with Talapapa, but... Also with Shane Simpson and Brennan Armstrong keeping the ball and picking up yards with his legs. Price now with the fake handoff. Going to roll to his left. Overshoots his receiver. That was a little bit of a story, not only in the first half of our game, but really, Mark, all season long as we've seen Duke play Notre Dame and Boston College as you take a look at the numbers for the first half. Yeah, and you, you see a lot of these high throws coming from Chase Price. And 
to me, when I want to see a quarterback throw the ball high, it means he's not really stepping into his throws. He's kind of flicking it off his wrist, off his back foot. That's why he has so many incompletions and inconsistency. Jackson. Close line once again, Nick Jackson there on the stop. And it'll bring up third down and long. Zandier, I know that's your kind of player. It's easy stop. And they run a little cross dog up front with the linebackers and freeze Zane Zandier up to come through and talk to the coach about him and his leadership. He doesn't, he doesn't really care about leadership. He just wants to play football and hit people. You saw him do that there. <laughs> Third and ten, this is not where Duke wants to be. Pressure from Jackson, but a completion out toward midfield. That's Calhoun, still on his feet, spins away from the tackler and gets into Virginia territory. That's a big third down pickup. That is a massive third down pickup, Chris. It, you saw that. Picked up the pressure, a little bit of miscommunication on the outside, but kept the running back and tight end into block, and they freed up chase Bryce to be able to step up in the pocket deliver the ball right on target and to his wide receiver right at midfield now the fake to Jackson Bryce again throwing this time to his left hitting Bobo I think that's the first time Bobo's made a catch tonight Monte Cross rides him down but another good pickup for Duke first catch two receivers for Bobo yeah two receivers making catches that we didn't see a lot of in the first half rude route by Bobo sticking his foot in the ground and turning back a lot of these defensive backs for UVA are playing off. Those routes will be open throughout the day. This time they give the Jackson. Steps into that defensive line. Give him three yards on first down. Again, as much as Duke struggled offensively, particularly in that second quarter. Only down seven here at the break. Scoring drive right here, and all of a sudden, this is a completely different game. Rice the fake to Jackson. Pressure coming. Just unloads it. Oh, most not only just picked off, but Cross might have been gone. Wow, that was lucky by Chase Price that Devontae Cross wasn't going for six points the other way. Pressure off the edge by Blunt right in the face of the rollout. At that point, you just gotta take a sack or duck under. You can't throw that ball up in no man's land. Empty backfield now on third and seven. Barwini in motion. That ball tipped at the line of scrimmage, never got to his intended receiver. Looked like Snowden got those big mitts on it. Coming in at 6'7", he's got a lot of range. Self defensive linemen, linebackers, when you're on your pass rush and you don't think you can get to the quarterback, just stick your hands up. Either he's playing the two or three yards off the ball, spying the quarterback, but is still able to find his way in the lane. So Charlie Ham's going to come in and try a long field goal. Forty-seven yards. It's got the distance and the accuracy. So a good start to the second half for the Duke Blue Devils. Charlie Ham splits the uprights. We've got ourselves a four-point game here in Charlottesville. Following us here on the ACC Network, 8 o'clock Eastern, it's going to be North Carolina State taking on Virginia Tech. It's our ACC Network primetime matchup presented by Geico. Virginia Tech has won four straight against NC State, but they hadn't even played each other since 2015. Surprisingly, they will tonight right here on the ACC Network. Excited to see what Virginia Tech looks like. Bud Foster is no longer there as defensive coordinator. A huge change, and they're taking on an NC State team that really showed out well offensively in their opening. Yeah, ran the ball really well. You're right. Yeah, NC State, the person's back healthy for them, and they look really good on the ground. So that'll be a fun one to watch tonight. Looks like we've got a fun second half brewing here. Wasn't sure we get it, but Duke taking that first possession in the third quarter and at least getting three points out of it. Only down four. Big Cutcliffe 
Yeah, you saw him pass up a field goal opportunity early with Charlie Ham. Good confidence in his kicker. Got points on the board. So UBA can match. Tyler Papa now trying to bounce it outside. That's big old Jameer Carter just hang, I mean, hanging all over. Him. That's Wayne Carter, excuse me. Dirk, we've talked about the fatigue of his defense, and I think that had a lot to do with how Wayne Talapapa was able to break so many tackles and drive the pile forward towards the end of that first half. Good job there, stopping him for only a three-yard game. Second and eight, Virginia looking to move fairly quickly. Janet drops it. Right in his hands and couldn't squeeze it. Third and long. Just like that, third and eight. Drop passes will lead to this pressure on the quarterback. Brennan Armstrong. A lot of guys split out. Use his legs if he wants to and has his reliable wide receiver, Jan, at number 13 in the slot. Looking for Kemp coming across the middle. They hook up. Kemp's still on his feet. No whistle yet. And that'll be a first down. That's kind of fun. That's yeah, kind of fun play. Flip back up on his feet. You seen that? That that's when being 170 pounds is actually in your favor. Yeah, for sure. Just rolls yeah. back over the defender, stays on his feet. Yeah, bounce. In the awareness also to know that you're not down. He got up right away and continued moving. Really a heads up play by Jeremiah Lewis to get him down on the ground. Just pass a little bit behind Pole Jan. He can't squeeze it. As Jalen Alexander was there on the coverage for the Duke Blue Devils. So a lot of targets go to that big tight end. Five targets already today. Only three times able to complete the catch. But you see how reliable and, and how trusting Armstrong is in his big tight end. Keaton Thomas again in the game, split the top of your screen. They give to Talapapa. Just dances his way into the second level. Right there on the stop, but Talapapa gives him a good gain on second down to make it third and medium. Yeah, Polgin is a guy, not just catch the ball, but we talked to Robert and I, the offensive coordinator, and said, we finally have a tight end that we can run directly behind. They really like his physicality and the blocking. They lined him up in the backfield on that play as the lead blocker. Now he's out for this third and five. Armstrong, got to get it to his running back and does, but Simpson can't keep his feet. As Shaka Hayward was there to bring him down and he'll bring up fourth down. Indecisiveness by Simpson, the running back who was coming out of the backfield. He had to check pressure coming off the edge first and just was unsure whether the D end was going to come or not, and ended up stuttering, allowing time for Shaka Hayward to get him down. And really good stop by Duke defensively. In order to, to, to kind of get back in this game, get more touches in Chase Bryce's hands, they forced a punt, and they're going to have a pretty decent field position to uh, start this next drive. Nash Griffin back to punt for Virginia. Gets off a kick that's going to bounce. It's going to take a Virginia bounce. And down at about the 15-yard line. Duke takes back over. Down four we come back. I had a unique experience this morning in doing the march that was formed by the groundskeepers, a group of Uver University of Virginia football players as well as their coach, Marcus Haggins. And what they did was they created a march from Heather Higher Way to the Memorial of Enslaved Laborers all the way up to the Rotunda. And when you complete this march, you are saying that you are for unity and you are for change in the city of Charlottesville. And they gave me a bracelet that they give everybody who completes this march. And this will mean a lot to me. And on the bracelet it says, take back our grounds. And that's a reference to the campus here that they call the grounds. First down for Duke from their own 15. Jackson, who lined up outside on the screen, and he's going to lose yardage. 
again. Yeah, really phenomenal. It, this groundskeepers was started really following conversations that the UVA football players had via Zoom after the death of George Floyd. And that march actually covers the opposite direction of the ground that the white naturalists marched in Charlottesville in 2007 during the Unite the Right rally in which caused the death of some protesters and, and they really are taking back the grounds and protecting their grounds and you know, we have all been well aware that racism and injustice is not gone in America and the Washington Post article just you know, a few weeks following the George Floyd death there's still volunteer armed statue guards set up besides the statue of Confederate leaders Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson in Charlottesville so great work by these young men on this UVA campus. Third down for Chase Bryce, has a receiver open and they cook, they hook up just shy of midfield. And that's one of the better strikes he's fired all day long, Daryl Harding Jr. on the receiving end. A big young target for Chase Bryce. And he was going against Nick Grant, number one at cornerback. He's a guy that Nick Howell really targeted as he needs to get better and play better than he did last year beat on that pass. Jackson tough running inside. Six good yards into Virginia territory before Noah Taylor and D'Angelo Amos are there to stop him. Think about, you know, think about this round and this mission that football players all over the country have taken upon themselves to, you know, make it about more than just football and really, really great to see them doing that and take that upon themselves in such a time as this. Bryce over the head of his intended receiver. Tried to hook up with Philly R. Johnson. He'll bring up third and four. Third and four is so much better than third and 12, which you saw a lot of times in the first half. And just you know, also impressive. You know, if you're going to play a field position game and get forced into punts, at least you're crossing midfield. Remember this drive, drive started from inside Duke's own 15-yard line, now crossing midfield, getting into striking position. Quick out. Marweedy trying to find that first down marker, and he spins and gets there. That's Mr. Marweedy Mar Mar again. Yeah. Didn't think we'd call his name as much as we are. Don't know a great might get those targets, but good job, good route. Working against D'Angelo Amos. Turn up field, first down. Duke once again putting a drive together. Bryce trying to go downfield into a lot of traffic, and just as I say that, he throws a pick. Seemed ill-advised on that pass, Mark, and Brenton Nelson made him pay. Yeah, and you Gaining a little bit of confidence in your wide receivers, a little bit of pressure up front by Richard Burney, and just you know, throwing into double, really almost triple coverage with three defenders there. And, and Chase Price is, you know, is kicking himself right now. He he knows that that's not what he wanted. This UVA defense give them credit, disguising a lot of their coverages. But Brent Nelson is the ACC Defensive Rookie of the Year in 2017, and. They lost the injury, lost eight games. They were really excited to get him back and knew he would make a difference. Armstrong taking over now from his own two. Midway through this third quarter. From his end zone going up top. Trying to find Davis. And defended nicely on the play by Lum Young. Young's given up about six inches to LaBelle Davis Jr. Good job. He doesn't let his eyes turn back. Anytime you turn back to the football to look at where it is, you tend to drift away from the wide receiver. He kept his eyes right on the, on the belly button, almost. Maybe because he's so much shorter, but you know, the belly button of the receiver was able to knock the ball out. Strong again from his own end zone. This time he tucks it up and runs and picks up a yard. Dwayne Carter and Derek Tangelo combined to make the stop. So here we are again with Virginia at third and long from the shadow of their own goalpost. Yeah, third and long. 
This is where Duke's defense usually gets off. Derek Tangelo, Victor Kimukeji, Chris Rump getting some pressure on the quarterback. They haven't gotten any sacks so far in this game. But so important to force this three and out to gain the field position advantage for the offense and Chase Bryce on their next possession. This could be a free play. So Armstrong has that going for him, and he's going to go downfield and just can't connect with Davis. You think a receiver that's 6'7", you can't overthrow him, and he just overthrows him. Over, overthrows him, and good job by Brandon Armstrong using the hard cap when you're a defender. When you're a defender and you're down there, you tell yourself, earmuffs, earmuffs. It's like you've got to wear earmuffs so you don't jump off sides. It's a free five yards. Gets him out of the shadow of your own end zone. Really good job by Brandon Armstrong and lack of discipline by Dimu Keiji in this Duke defensive line. So a much more manageable third and four for Brandon Armstrong. Again, making his first career start here. Placing Bryce Perkins, the all-time passing and total offense leader in Virginia history. Armstrong has time, tries to float it, it's intercepted! Picked off at the 10-yard line and brought out at the 8-yard line. That's Rocky Shelton. In a stunning turn of events, Duke is right back in the red zone, trailing by just four. <laughs> Rocky Shelton, he's the one who will come away with it. But this play was made by Jeremiah Lewis. And, you know, Jeremiah Lewis is going to get a great jam on the wide receiver, deterring his route. That's the, that was to Terrell Janna. Got a great jam on Terrell Janna. Wasn't in the spot that Brandon Armstrong thought he would be. Resulted in an interception and really uh, need a good job here by punching in the end zone. But great play by Duke's defense to just give this offense another opportunity. First career interception for Rocky Shelton. And the second career interception thrown by Armstrong, which obviously means second in this game, is setting Duke up in a great spot. Deion Jackson behind Chase Bryce. They give the Jackson along the right side. Maybe picks up a yard. Take another look at the interception play. Look at 39 at the bottom of your screen. He's all over Terrell Janna. And as Janna tries to pivot out, just nowhere for Brandon Armstrong to throw the ball. Blue advice throw. I think there was more of a jam on the play, but. Good job, opportunistic by Rocky Shelton. Bryce now with an empty backfield, has time over the top. Hits his tight end, Noah Gray for the score. <laughs> really, really good play call. Really good play call by David Cutcliffe. Calling plays for the first time since 2007 when he was at Tennessee. Lined up in an empty set. Got your all-world tight end, Noah Gray, in a zone defense against a linebacker. Gave him a little out and up. Pat and move by tight ends in the red zone for a touchdown. Pam for the try. Nice job by Jackson Hubbard, the holder, to get it down. And it is good. We call this a... A nod route by the tight end. He just nods right at the linebacker, goes over top. Bryce is fired up, get the touchdown. UK ball, we come back. Duke has taken the three point lead here in Charlottesville, converting yet another turnover into points. Here's the interception. Yeah, good job by the interception and creating points off turnovers is something Duke hasn't been great at, but they did here. And you look at the nod route by Noah Gray, just worked his way into Zane Zandier, who needs to take his tight end vertical. It's a little bit of a, oh, by the way, a, a caveat to the normal rule in cover four. But in that situation, you need to take your tight end number three all the way to the back of the end zone. Good job by Duke capitalizing on UVA's mistake. Charlie Ham boots it into the end zone. We'll get a touchback, and Virginia will start from their own 25. And 
Brennan Armstrong, who got off to a slow start, then really picked things up in the second half, helped primarily by a really strong running game for Virginia, has also struggled here in the second half. Yeah, has struggled. And I think one of the reasons is you look at this Duke defense, and they got tired at the end of the first half, and they got a chance to catch their breath at halftime, came out here in the second half to start, started playing well against the run, and forced Brennan Armstrong into some tough throws on third down. Officials getting together to discuss the clock. We saw their momentarily Duke. First time they've led a game in the second half all year. You see right there, an actual whistle in the ref's mouth. That's new this week. Right. They decided to allow actual whistles along with the electronic whistles as long as the refs are away from the players. Armstrong low, but certainly a catchable ball by Kemp. <laughs> They'll bring up second down behind the chains. It seems like for a team that ran the ball so well, Mark, in the second quarter, they've just been behind the chains here in the second half. Yeah, and that's really been the story of the game for both offenses. It's seemingly, you know, if you're not productive on first down, it's been very difficult for either team to capitalize on drives. Quick little shovel pass to Kent. Has the outside, give him five before Shaka is there to make the stop. Third down here for Arizona, for uh, Virginia, rather. Good play by Shaka, just getting over top of the big offensive tackle and getting downhill. And Shaka Hayward's a guy who, first year starting, really impressed by what he can do physically and mentally. Janet, can he get the first down? He stretches for the marker. I think he got it. He did. Good individual effort. He may be shaken up on the play, too. Slow to get up. He was fourth in the ACC last year with 74 catches on the season. He averaged 12 yards per reception. He was a very productive wide receiver. He was in basically that number three spot with Joe Reed and Hasis Dubois on the team as well. So now being really the number one target for you know the top cornerback on the team slowed down a little bit in this game so hopefully it's just a cramp these bunch routes that UVA has utilized have been very effective against both zone and man defense that Duke has been playing wasn't sure how much man Duke would play coming to this game with their two top cornerbacks hurt but that they have felt very confident in Jeremiah Lewis and Leonard Johnson so far in this game. Eric Wood, what's going on? Similar to the start of the NFL season where with no preseason and not a lot of contact, there was a ton of injuries. We've seen a lot of injuries early in the season for both these teams. We mentioned earlier, both of Duke's starting quarterbacks out for this game, and then Virginia with a huge layoff before their first game, already with an injury to Nick Jackson. Fortunately, he's been able to come back, but now Terrell Jan is down on the field. We're just seeing a lot of injuries early in the season for both college and NFL players coming off the COVID break. Yeah, Jan is having to be helped off the field, although he's, he appears like he might be able to on his own if he so chooses to, but getting helped off the field at the moment. Bronco obviously concerned about both Jan and the way things are going right now in this game. Momentum clearly switched to the other side. But a first down for Virginia. Nice move by Talapapa. That's from running on the sand all summer long, isn't it? Get those oh my feet. goodness. That was nice. That was a really nice move by Talapapa. He's known for being kind of that hammer inside, breaking tackles between, between the tackles. But yeah, you know, he did, he just put Lummy Young on skates on that last run. Dancing. Now let's see what he can do on the pass receiving side. Not much as the defense was right there. Hayward and company there to bring him down. Take a look at that move by Talapapa on that last run. Good cut bouncing outside. I mean, you know, this He's is gonna the be umpire. Yeah, this is gonna be <laughs> like probably one of the nicest compliments he's ever gotten, but that. Look a little bit like Barry Sanders. I mean, I'm just going to say, a little jump cut to the outside, going back inside. A little bit. I like that run. I like it. I like it a lot. Grant Mish, the tight end, now in the backfield for Virginia. Tyler Papa runs behind him on that right side. You get maybe a couple. Yeah, gosh, what an offseason for Tyler Papa. I mean, 
when you go home and you know you're going home to parts of Virginia or maybe Georgia, you got Zoom calls with your team. That's no big deal. You're on the same time zone. He had to go back to Oahu. He was in Hawaii, and so that was 3 a.m. his time, and he was taking these Zoom calls and turning coaches meetings in his closet so that he wouldn't wake the rest <laughs> of his family. Oh man, that's at least you're up at 3 a.m. in Hawaii. Yeah, not a bad place to be up at 3 a.m. Virginia 4 for 12 on the day on third down. Armstrong flushed. Sidearm throws it. Dangerous. And it goes incomplete. Well, Fr Brandon Armstrong wants to keep improving his game. Those are throws he can't make. Rolling out to his right, throwing back over across the middle to the left. And, you know, you think about Wayne Talapoff. You're up 3 a.m. You're a college kid. He has the presence of mind to hide in the closet. I'm sure his parents are very thankful for that. Because that's, that's an early rise. It's an early rise. I don't know. I mean, I would like to think I would be that considerate of my family in college. But uh, who knows? Good for him. Get done with the Zoom call. Sun's just starting to rise. Go catch the surf. Might as well make the most of it. Get out there. He gave the view. punch. Yeah. Trying to angle it to the corner and just catches the end zone for the touchback. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for Sunday Best here on the ACC Network. It starts with a women's field hockey doubleheader at noon. Wake Forest and Virginia followed by Duke and Louisville. Then a classic women's soccer rivalry. Number one North Carolina taking, number seven, taking on number seven Duke at 3.30. Sunday Best right here on the ACC Network and on the ESPN app. Not only do I love the fact, Mark, that we get a lot of a lot of ACC football in the ACC network here, but over the first couple of years, uh, you and I both know we love lacrosse season, but field hockey too, an opportunity to see some sports that you don't get an opportunity to see very often. Uh, you know, maybe on ESPN or ESPN2. The ACC network gives you the opportunity to see all of those spring sports and great sports fun to watch. Nice run on first down by Duke. That's Durant. He's able to pick up a first down. Oh, Mateo Durant, good job showing his speed on that run. Turn to the edge and saw him dip that, that shoulder down, that right shoulder. He just excels past Joey Blunt. Ooh. Here's my shoulder. Durant again, this time cuts it back upside, but right inside the teeth of that Virginia defense won't get much. Jameer Carter was there to stuff it. Dave Cutcliffe talked about his offensive line finishing blocks, and you can you can just see you can see that initial surge by the offensive line, but just not able to climb to the second level. And if they are able to get on some of these linebackers, that two-yard gain is a five-yard gain. Second and five is a whole lot different than second and eight. Deion Jackson now back at the tailback spot for two. Fake to him. Bryce is going to try and go up top. Try to get to Pankhole. There's a flag on the play. He was held. Nelson, I think, is going to be the guilty party. Pass interference. Defense, number 28. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Indeed, and the drive continues for the Blue Devils. And we've seen a lot of these deep shots by Chase Bryce throughout the game. We talked to him a little bit just you know, in terms of the difference. The differences between Clemson and, and Duke. And he said, you know, when I was being recruited to come to Duke after entering the transfer portal, I loved what I saw from the wide receiver position, but... What you get at Clemson is you get guys who can go up and they make 50-50 balls, 70-30 balls, so not as as accurate as he needs to be on these ones in this game. Jackson, first to the hole, has a lot of room, stays on his feet, inside the 25, down to the 22. <laughs> 25 yards before Matt Gam was able to bring him down. Number 63, Jason Jacob Monk. The right guard got up on Zane Zandier on that play. Got to the second level. Deion Jackson, great job getting through the hole. To be a double pass. But Calhoun's in a little bit of trouble here. Now he throws downfield. Dangerous pass and it's intercepted. Nelson made up for the holding call by picking this one off and getting it back to Virginia. Oh, man, really. Calhoun is down. Yeah, Calhoun is down. And 
Timeout injured Duke Quick. In obvious pain. The play call was setting up relatively nicely. You throw the ball out to your wide receiver who was a high school quarterback. Let him make a play, but too much pressure and ill-advised throw. That's not, that's not a throw that you ever coach a wide receiver on. Let's hope he's okay. Nelson with the INT. He was shaped, you know, he bobbled the initial lateral, and then he was in trouble from the start. Just too much pressure. Yeah, Nick Grant you know, really just worked through the block of Noah Gray to get in, in the face of Jalen Calhoun. And watch at the end of this play. After he throws the ball, just can tell the number of who hit him, but whoever hit him hit him very hard. And he was in a compromising position, too, having just thrown the football. Well, that ovation you hear is Calhoun, Jalen Calhoun getting up, walking off under his own power. That's a great sign. Great to see. And that big hit, a lot of times there, there's flags that come out just because of how big the hit was. But it did look like it was you know, shoulder pad to shoulder pad, not hitting a defensive player. I think good no, no call on targeting. Just a physical play, and good to see him get up off the field. It's a turnover by... By UBA, and that's, that's their third of the day. Interesting series of momentum swings here, too. Can this Virginia offense now capitalize and keep their defense off the field? Duke's defense was on the field almost the whole first half. It's been the exact opposite here in the second half. Armstrong getting some good yardage with his legs on first down. Yeah, why not? I mean, what got your offense going in the first half? A nice drive, sprinkling in some of the quarterback power plays. See your quarterback running the ball. Set up some different pass stuff down the field, but just being able to have your quarterback run the ball brings an extra safety down the box and opens up some of the outside passing lanes for the wide receivers. Tyler Papa caught in the backfield, tries to get back to the line of scrimmage, and is just fighting his way. Still on his feet, and maybe even picks up a little bit. Did and picked up a few yards, and, and this just comes down to who wants it more. Right there, it's all run. over. All over him in the backfield, got three or four guys around his legs, and he just you know, keeps driving, keeps driving his legs, and that's effort. I mean, that is effort, and if he can maintain that same effort throughout this season, he's going to have a very good season. Final minute of this third quarter. Tom Papa through the hole. Game of about seven on first down. This will be a first down, excuse me, for the Wahoos as the clock winds down here in this third quarter. So they've gotten out of trouble in terms of being deep in their own territory. Check that box. Now can they mount a sustained drive here to end the third and start the fourth? Lavelle Davis in motion. We give to Simpson. Leaps over defender, gets about five on first down, and that'll do it for the third quarter. we got a good fourth quarter coming your way. Duke has rebounded here in the second half to take a three-point lead at Scott Stadium in Charlottesville. Back to the Commonwealth after this. Start of the fourth quarter in Charlottesville. Duke has stormed back with a resoundingly strong third quarter to take the lead over the Cavaliers. Virginia has the football, though, in their own 26-yard line after an interception. Simpson in motion. He'll be on the receiving end. As a man to beat, can't do it, but he does pick up solid yardage. Alexander was out there to make up, make the tackle, but not before Simpson was able to pick up a first down. Yeah, Simpson's going to bring a little bit of this running back out of the backfield. Five out ability. It's hobbled a little bit on that tackle, it looks like. Staying in, though, as Virginia wants to go quickly. Janice back in the game. That's good news for Virginia fans. Trying to go up top to Davis, who makes the catch. That's the benefit of having a 6'7 receiver on the outside. Yeah, when you tip it at the high point, you have six feet and almost ten feet to catch the ball again on the way down. Good concentration by the young freshman to pull that ball in. Up until that point, 
Hadn't had a completion over 20 yards in this entire game for UVA. That one went for 27 in the long of the night. Talapapa back in the backfield with Armstrong. Whistles blow this one dead before it ever gets started. Ruling on the field in the catch. Previous play is under further review. Rick Page, our replay official, will take another look at that catch by Lavelle Davis. Obviously, what they're looking at here is if he was able to secure it as he went to the ground. You see the tip, bottom tip of the football hit the ground. I don't, I think that's to tell whether, yeah. yeah, tough to tell whether he had control before that hit or if he trapped it on the ground after the ball hit the ground there was not a lot of movement but I, you know the question is at what point did they determine that he gained um, possession of that football and to me like you said a tough call situation you go with the call on the field I think a good look at this one though that ball can hit the ground as long as you rule that he had possession of it first That's the call on the field, and Mark, you have to have enough to overturn it. I'm not sure you do on this replay. Although we've been wrong already this year, we've been wrong. Oh, yeah, of course we have. <laughs> of course we have. <laughs> that's, but that's that's why we're calling bang. the game and not making the rules. But that's it is, you know, correct. This is, this is a bang bang, and um, that's why Rick Page by is making the yeah, call. Right? Both coaches on the, on the left. Yeah, they're, they're, this is a big play for both of them. Virginia started to get rolling offensively again. Of the mask of the officials on the right, including our referee today, Gary Patterson. Here's, a, here's an interesting call, too. Right now, Dave Cutcliffe is waiting on the ruling of this completion, no completion. He also is calling the plays for the offense, and but this is one of the things that he talked about as a disadvantage to calling the plays right now when his defense is on the field. He's not scheming. He's not looking at kind of what all the options are for the whole playbook, what they should do the next drive out. You know, he's being a full head coach right now. So, so much prep has to go into the week leading into the game that not a lot of that thought process has to go on during the game. Don't you think you have to be a coach with his experience to be able to do that? Because... I've he has to know, and he's seen it a, a million times, how every play and everything sets up in the heat of the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a reason why he's the most tenured coach in the ACC and the only coach who does that. You know, he, he has that confidence in uh, you know himself. He doesn't like doing it per se, but you know he felt it gave his team the best opportunity to be successful this year, especially with you know, a new quarterback in Chase Price. They've been looking at this one for a long time. And as they as they look at this play, whether it's complete or incomplete, they got to see where the exactly the ball will be spot in each situation. Well, he buried the lead nicely with the long replay review, and then his mic cut out. Just but, the most uh, inopportune time. <laughs> reading lips. Uh, that should change the second down. Looks like they're going to call that incomplete. Well, overturn. The call in the field was a completed pass. 27-yard completion wiped out. They'll bring it back. Maybe second down for Virginia. Take one last look at it. The ball just coming through, and the ruling was that it did hit the ground before... Bell Davis was able to secure it. Yeah, that's a great zoom look by the camera team right at the end there. I do think that ball bobbled, trapped it under his body. Changed to second down. And uh, second and ten. Opportunity. Still no passes completed over 20 yards for Brennan Armstrong. Please, please reset the clock to 14 minutes, 35 seconds. 14 minutes, 35 seconds. making sure the clocks are right, the placement is Thank right. You. Now it's like we're ready to get going.
Kemp in motion. Armstrong now changing the play. Now Talapapa in motion out of the backfield. Duke stunning up the middle. Has Jana open at midfield. Brought down to the 48. It'll be a first down into Duke territory. That was really the first time all night we saw Brennan Armstrong step into pressure and throw the ball. As you watch the outside release by Davis really opened up the middle for Terrell Jana. Good throw, stepping into the pressure, completing a long ball down the field. Armstrong, now he's going to be dropped. Dimakaji finally got him, Mark. Yeah, finally got him. He's been right there a bunch today. He's been held sackless. At three and a half sacks last week versus Boston College. We knew it was only a matter of time before he got to the quarterback. And this is the thing about Victor Dimukeji. He goes on hot streaks. He will maybe go, you know, held sackless for two or three games and then all of a sudden get three, three and a half, four sacks a game. So if he gets something that he thinks is going to work, he'll go back to it. And that was big Virginia now way behind the chain second down and 19 Armstrong again changing the play as Talapapa flanking him in the backfield He looked to throw Puts it up trying to find his big receiver again this time he does No question about this one Lavelle Davis brings this one down a big game Wow this was a wild throw by Brennan Armstrong again, Demukeji looped around and was getting some pressure, but after that little clutch, just threw it up there, and it really got the, probably a miscommunication with the wide receivers both in the same spot, but good concentration by Davis and came down with it. A lot of targets Davis's way throughout this game. Billy Kemp creating almost a bunch set. This is where they maybe flare the running back out in the pass. Papa staying in the protect, going to the big receiver again in the end zone, and he comes down with it. What a catch by Davis. <laughs> well, the 800 Virginia fans are cheering loud because I can hear them. I can hear them through my headset, and they better be cheering. I mean, this is a showing for Lavelle Davis, and good for Brendan Armstrong to continuously go back to him over and over again. This is a ball that, oh, and he got that foot down. Just a great play. And look at him hug on the ball. He's not letting <laughs> that one go. He's not letting that one be reviewed. Rolling on the field is a catch for a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. All scoring plays are reviewed, and this one is obviously not as much of a slam dunk as some of the others, so our replay official, Rick Page, will... Just confirm that Davis not only secured the ball, but also got that one foot necessary in bounds for the score. We talked to Brocko Mendenhall a little bit about his recruiting. And you look at this recruiting class that's come in this year as freshmen, and not one player in that recruiting class was under six feet. And we talked about length, and you, you just can't coach height. And Watch that ball come down. Looks like he pinned his elbow underneath it, and that ball did not move. Well, it's under there. But the key is the ball moving, and does he get a foot in bounds before his body hits the orange? That is out of bounds. See right. What comes down first? So that's that elbow comes down first, Mark. And yeah, that elbow will be hits. a touchdown. I think that toe hit too. I think the question is just whether that ball started moving. And as long as it stays kind of pinned against his body. He's okay. Again, this was called a touchdown on the field. I don't even, I don't not, can't even tell whether the ball hit the ground at all. So the elbow is good. We That's got that one down. Now it's whether the ball touchdown. moves or not after it hits the ground. Yep, and they, yeah, they saw right there that ball, although it hits the turf, it does not bobble out of his hands. They made the correct ruling, ball confirmed, touchdown. That's a happy young man. It should be. It was a great play. Brian Delaney in for the point after try for Virginia. They've just retaken the lead. And they've extended it to four points. 
They finally got to play, Mark. And they're excited about it. Oh, they're pumped up. They got some big plays out of their big receiver and confidence. Brandon Armstrong on that drive. Let's see if Duke and Chase Bryce can match this intensity when we come back. Zane Zandier's family out in full force today. They're happy. They're getting to see Zane a lot today. Career high 15 tackles, including two TFLs for Virginia, and his Hoos have just taken the lead. That's a lot of tackles, Chris. <laughs> 15 <laughs> tackles all over the place. The start of the fourth quarter, that's why. Delaney with another touchback. Back and forth we go in this second half. Let's see what Chase Price has in store. It doesn't get any easier at any point for either of these quarterbacks. You, know, you score a big touchdown, you make a big play, and it gets answered right back. A little bit of healthy competition here between the two first-year starting quarterbacks, but I think a lot of their play is predicated on that offensive line and how well they can allow the quarterback to have time to go through his reads and make the plays necessary in order to pick up first downs. Bryce quickly outside. Receiver makes the catch and stays in bounds. Picks up an extra couple of yards. That's Dennis Smith. Talked earlier in the game about Virginia playing off on a lot of these wide receivers trying to break down the ball. The Duke has broken a lot of tackles. You saw Nick Grant miss that one on the stiff arm. Yards after catch are being big for Duke in this on this drive and throughout this game. Fumble. And Bryce is just going to have to fall on it, and that's big too because the momentum was there for the Blue Devils, and now they're behind the chains. Yeah, Bryce looked up. And so number 11, Charles Snowden coming right at him. Could probably a good choice, especially after some of the ill-advised interceptions. They right. fall on that, play another down. Max protects that with that tight end in behind the tackle. Fake to Jackson. Chase double pumps. Again connects. And again, it's Dennis Smith. Duke has had its most success this game when they have kept two blockers in. Allow these routes down the field. Good job coming back to the football, but yeah, you saw you saw that double clutch by Chase Bryce. The timing is still not there with these wide receivers. So little time preparing for this season. 35. Pressure comes up the middle. Bryce gets it off and it's intercepted. Joey Blunt picks it off and gives it right back to Virginia in midfield. First down. Wow. Joey Blunt, fantastic play and trying to force it. You know, Chase Bryce knew the game you know, was in his hands at this point. Obviously a lot of football left to play, but you see the length that Charles Snowden brings, his big 6'7 body, forces that route to go a little bit farther than Chase wanted to throw it. Joey Blunt. Good bluff in the coverage and just hopped in, picked off the pass. Good interception. Fourth turnover of the day for the Duke Blue Devils. It sets Virginia up at the Duke 49 yard line. God, I would love to see UVA take a shot here after a big turnover. And the man covers on the outside. Ooh, interesting. Look at this play. Direct snap to Talapapa. And Thompson's going to go deep. And he almost throws a pick. He was going deep for Armstrong because Thompson was a former quarterback at Mississippi State. Oh, my goodness. Well, they did the shot that I wanted him to do. It was in a wacky fashion. I love it, though. Armstrong was acting like he was changing the play and just ran a pattern. Gosh, man. Heads up play by Jameric Woods, the transfer out of Michigan. He's a grad transfer. He's seen it all. I don't know if you've seen that before, but he stayed on the quarterback. Really good that pass. Talapapa, he might have something here. Stays on his feet and gets down to the 40, just shy of the first down. 
He will bring up third down and short. Good block on the outside by Lavelle Davis, the true freshman. He showed what he can do, bringing hauling in those passes at the high point. Sets a nice block on the edge. So important in order to get production from your running back on those pass routes to have the wide receivers buy in the blocking. And you're absolutely right. Lavelle Davis did a great job along with Terrell Jana to get Talapapa that first down. Empty backfield on third and one. Okay. Sorry, not the first down. Pole jam. Oh, he almost stayed on his feet, but he does pick up the first. Waters was there to just trip him up where he might have gone to the gone to the end zone. Concentration by Pole Jan. And Armstrong threw it in there. Duke defensively. Looks like they're getting tired on that defensive front, standing up a little longer. Hands on their hips. What's picked up? Armstrong. Connects again with Davis. Can he get into the end zone? He does! What an effort! Welcome to Charlottesville, LaBelle Davis Jr. Welcome to Charlottesville. Welcome to college football. This is the best throw that Brandon Armstrong has thrown the entire night to. Wide comeback route by his wide receiver. He puts it on target. And man, LaBelle Davis. Fighting off tacklers, spinning into the end zone. Goes in for his second touchdown of the day. Four catches, 101 yards, and two touchdowns for the true freshman from Dorchester, South Carolina. Delaney converts and Virginia strikes quickly a couple of times here in this fourth quarter to not only retake the lead but to extend it. Yeah, Armstrong fired up his first career start here in Charlottesville. Virginia up 11. Thank you, JC. Looking forward to hearing from you and the crew after we wrap things up here in Charlottesville, back in studio. Look at the score by quarters. Usually, Mark, that doesn't really tell you a whole lot. Today, it tells you everything. Every other quarter, one team has been dominant. Here in the fourth quarter, Virginia has, and that's why they've been able to forge this 11-point lead. Yeah, they have, and, you know, it's all about timing. When do you get hot, especially even in a game, and, you know, Lavelle Davis has gotten hot, Brandon Armstrong has gotten hot, and, even just the time of possession right now, UVA has had the ball for nine more minutes than Duke, and you could tell by some of those missed tackles on that last drive. But man, how about that? Four receptions, 101 yards. Not bad average, college. 25 yards yeah. per catch. First college game. It's been a long wait. And it's been worth it for Lavelle Davis. He's enjoying it on the sideline, but as we've seen in this game too, Mark, momentum swings. We've had a lot of them, and we still have 10 minutes left to play. Chase Bryce back to pass. Getting it out to, or try to get it to Deion Jackson, just overshoots him. Just too much pressure. Zane Zanthier is having an unbelievable game. Put the pressure on him. Yeah, he has, and you know, he's always around the ball, making tackles, getting to the quarterback. And see here, you talk about finishing blocks. You just saw him slip past Jacob Monk, the right guard, because you know, the ball might have been out already. He just kind of stopped blocking. Second and ten, Snowden showing pressure on the edge. Now stunts inside. Picked up, though. Bryce has time. Now he's sacked. Jawan Briggs got him. That was a coverage sack. Yeah, that was a coverage sack, and gosh, Juwan Briggs, he's a guy who was a true freshman last year, played a lot. Coaches were so impressed by how he worked in this offseason, came back even better, and just a really fantastic young man. He plays ten instruments, Chris, and that's, sings in the UVA choir. It's like Prince. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Pressure coming. Bobo steps up. Bryce has a man downfield. 
Unfortunately, he overshoots him, and that's intercepted. Nick Grant. Nick Grant was playing center field, and another interception, number four on the day for Chase Bryce. Yeah, you know, you could tell so, some of these last routes, he just hasn't been consistent with the receiver. It's going to take a lot more for them to get back in this game. Big turnover forced by UVA on that last drive. An 11-point game as we come back to Charlottesville. Nine minutes left in the fourth quarter, and turnovers have been the name of the game. Five turnovers by Duke this week, five turnovers last week, and just inconsistency by Chase Bryce with the ball in the air. And you really feel for Chase Bryce coming in, very short offseason, just doesn't have the timing with his wide receivers synced up and has resulted in capitalizing on some different turnovers for UVA. It's going to take a lot for, for him to get in that rhythm with these wide receivers, and these first three weeks have been no help for that young man. You can tell the frustration. Five turnovers again today after five last week, and, you know, Coach Cutcliffe talked about it, how he has to make it fun for him, you know? He doesn't want the weight of the world on his shoulders. Just go out there and have fun, and you're not going to... You know, you're going to be less effective if you're tight, and you aren't having fun, and right now, and losing is never fun, and that's what... Duke is going through right now. Not over yet, though. Eight and a half left to go. The defense needs to get the ball back to their offense, though. Armstrong will need to keep it himself. Slides. Stay in bounds. Smart play. And third down. Good pick up on the ground. Armstrong and... Yeah, I mean, you have both of these quarterbacks are... They're both first-year starters, but they're in a very different position. And Chase Bryce has been here. He's been... He, or, sorry, Brendan Armstrong has been at UVA. He's gotten the experience. He's trained under another quarterback. And, you know, Chase Bryce is just completely new. He, you know, he came out here, wanted to get to work early, moved moved out to Duke in June, but really couldn't even do anything until July and didn't even meet his teammates until August. Breaking huddle with more than 11 players. substitution fraction. Very a short amount of time. Yeah, a very short amount of time to be able to get on the same page as wide receivers. It's shown, it's shown in the first three weeks. Armstrong with this latest flurry in the fourth quarter, getting his completion percentage up over 50%. Nice catch. Kent made a really nice grab on the sideline to pick up close to first down yardage. It looks like he's going to come maybe a yard short. Watch this catch. Man-to-man uh, -man coverage, back shoulder throw. I mean, that, that's a perfect throw <laughs> by Brandon Armstrong. Perfect. It's a perfect throw. Great catch by Kent. You're right. But this is what winning does, right? Winning creates confidence. And both quarterbacks struggled early in this game, but as this lead has increased for UVA. You saw, you've seen Brand Armstrong settle into himself and make throws like that. On fourth and one, Bronco opting to go for it. Ruling on the field with the ball carrying down at the 46-yard line. This play is under further review. So we'll look at the catch in the spot on this play. Beautiful one-handed catch by Kemp on that back shoulder throw. Did he make the catch A and B? Where should the ball be spotted? Take another look. As he, 47. Yeah, as he Big comes catch. down with the ball, I think where the ball is when that knee touches down, might be closer to the 47, could still be just short of the first down, but instead of a full yard, like a half a yard, and it looks like he possesses maybe the ball between, the entire time. Yeah, yeah, maybe between the 46 and 47, and I, I can't see any reason to overturn the catch. Heck of a catch. Ruling on the field stands, fourth down. Not enough to overturn it, so the ruling stands, fourth down and one. Bronco was opting to go for it before in his own territory near midfield. Let's see what he chooses to do here with just under seven to play. Looks like that offense is going to stay on the field. Nope, now he's rethought it. 
a smart decision by Bronco Mendenhall. No reason to put any momentum in the hands of Duke. Bobbled snap, stop, and that fourth and short. He's good field position for Chase Bryson. Still 11 point game. Let's see if Nash Griffin can bury the Blue Devils deep. No, more whistles. Timeout, yeah, Virginia. Timeout, timeout by Virginia. Out. Not everybody was on the field. There was a substitution error. They're missing timeout. their right tackle on the punt team. Virginia's up 11. We'll be right back after this. Broncos had time to think about it. Called a timeout. Will he go for it? Will he punt it? I see Nash Griffin still in the game, so it looks like it, that was just because they didn't have enough players on the field. Call the timeout. Get the right personnel out there, and Nash Griffin now will punt it back to Duke. Then 6.41 left in the game. Jake Bobo standing back to retrieve this punt. Duke's going to want to come after it. And they do. Griffin gets it off. Bobo lets it sail over his head and into the end zone for a touchback. Eric Woods down on the field. At this point, Chase Bryce is standing on the sideline with his helmet off. Number 12, Gunnar Holmberg, is getting out into the huddle with the starters. It appears like him or Chris Katrinick is going to take over after all those interceptions from Chase Bryce. And, you know, you alluded to it, Cotter. All week, all Cutcliffe wanted to see from Chase Bryce to cut loose and have fun. And, man, he just seemed to be struggling so bad early in this season. Yeah, the struggles have certainly been there during all three games. He's had moments, but and oftentimes he's been running for his life in this game. So we'll get an opportunity to see Gunnar Holmberg, the 6'3", 205-pound sophomore at Wake Forest, North Carolina. The Dave Cutcliffe talked about Gunnar Holmberg a little bit this week. He said he's the best athlete of the three guys. He had a knee injury in 2019 that kept him out. You saw right off the first play, using his legs, pick up some yards. Quick hand off to Duran. Maybe a couple before Noah Taylor drops him. As we go on, there's six minutes left to play. Third down and three. Oh, boy. Holmberg was just met. Cam was there. One. Welcome to the game. <laughs> well, this is a go for it, obvious go for it on fourth and one situation. You need two scores in this game. Obviously, the, this is the most important yard of the entire game. Holmberg has you know, shown already in first three plays that he can do it on the ground. Come out, Virginia. That's their second time. Virginia calls a timeout. Don't forget tonight at 11 o'clock Eastern, Jordan Cornett, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and Mark Richt will break down the entire day of ACC college football. It's the huddle right here on the ACC Network and on the ESPN app. Georgia Tech at Syracuse. Syracuse with a big win today in uh, basically the refurbished Carrier Dome looks totally different from the outside. They got a big win against Georgia Tech. Louisville and Pitt went right down to the wire. Florida State and Miami tonight. NC State and Virginia Tech on the ACC Network. A lot to talk about tonight on the huddle. Yeah, it's very injury from Mikhail Cunningham at the end of that Louisville game. Hopefully he's going to be all right. We'll be waiting for reports on that. But, you know, that'd be a big loss for the Cardinals. Big loss, you're right. They're one and two on the year. That's a quarterback sneak here. He's under center. Fourth and one. Oh, he fumbles the football on the fake. Ball still down on the ground, picked up by Virginia. And the Hoos will have it at the 10 yard line. Now we're going to put your backup quarterback in the position to be under center. That 
This is the first time Duke has gone under center the entire game. We expect him to take the snap from Will Taylor, a guy who you know, he's just not as used to taking snaps from. And it's all in his head and got the snap and just you know, he dropped it. So good play defensively. Yeah, good play defensively by UVA, but this is a, another turnover Duke has had, and turnovers have just really hurt them offensively so far this season. Their sixth of the night. The Virginian posi position to put this one away. <laughs> it's going to throw another go right out there to the belt. <laughs> Talapapa. Inside the five, keeps churning, keeps churning inside oh the two, my into the end goodness. zone. Wow. Wow. That's, that's impressive. He, they, Duke had him stopped, and I mean, that is just all effort. All effort by Talapapa. So Boda with a big block, too. Oh yeah, he stopped at the four-yard line. <laughs> his helmet comes off. I saw a mouthpiece fly out of there. You know, the earpiece from the helmet flies off. Oh yeah. Delaney with the try, perfect. Virginia extends their lead to 18. They got all the plays that Bronco Mendenhall is going to show to his team tomorrow. This quite possibly could be his favorite play. Watch the offensive line just get in there and push behind Wayne Talapapa. When you talk about finishing, in order for UVA to take that next step in terms of their progression as a football team, they need to finish correctly. Great job of the finish there by Wayne Talapapa and his offensive line. If you were with us from the start, slow start for Virginia. They fumbled the opening kickoff. Duke got a field goal out of it. Blue Devils were actually up 10 to nothing in this game in the first quarter for Virginia, and they've had to wait this long to start their season. Finally got going both offensively and defensively, and they put this game away despite trailing here early in the fourth quarter. See UVA celebrating a little bit on the sidelines. Interestingly enough, Bronco Mendenhall said, the biggest thing that coaches are getting wrong right now is instructing their players how to celebrate after wins. He said, you're seeing teams come home after getting a win and maybe celebrate in improper COVID way and not able to play the next week. So, putting a lot of trust in his players. If this win continues and they do come out of here with the W, it should be a quiet night on campus for these players. Don't go anywhere here on the ACC Network. Got another good game coming up, 8 o'clock. NC State, Mark, you mentioned it earlier. They're off to a really good start. They were impressive against Wake Forest, taking on number 20, Virginia Tech. With our ACC Network primetime matchup presented by Geico. Virginia Tech's won four in a row in that series, but they hadn't played since 2015, so kind of a new thing for both teams. Yeah, we talked about you know, just UVA not getting to start until today. Same thing with Virginia Tech, and you know a lot has uh, been talked about for Virginia Tech in the offseason, obviously losing Bud Foster as a defensive coordinator and, and really finding their quarterback in Hendon Hooker throughout last season. They're a team that's primed to have a lot of guys returning in important spots. And again, they, they weren't picked very high in terms of their finish the preseason. And let's go down to Eric on the field for a little bit more on these Hokies. Virginia Tech has tweeted out that tonight 23 players and two coaches will be out for this game due to COVID. And COVID has wrecked their program through the month of September. And up until today, they were figuring out if they could even play this game tonight. And they're down a lot of players and two coaches, like I mentioned. Oh, man. Yeah, it, is, it is going to be a season that you're just going to have to Take it week by week. Got an injury here for Virginia, and that's Joey Blunt. And this is exactly what you do not want to have happen here with 4.28 left to go in this game, up 18, Mark. No, absolutely not. Joey Blunt has had a fantastic start to this game and this season. He's been a staple of this secondary, really playing well. And as you hate to see 
especially at the end of the game, this happening, but it looks more like a hyper extension than really getting twisted up on. It can hurt just as bad. Or even a, a bang. He banged it, grabbed it right away. It's tough to see. He's in obvious pain. Yeah. He's getting attended to, and you see the respect that he has from a lot of his teammates all circled around him. Hoping he's going to be okay. Incidentally, we were just talking about Malik Cunningham and Louisville. Our colleague Kelsey Riggs was at the game. She was doing the sidelines at that game. Says Louisville says Malik is okay, moving all of his extremities and has all of his feelings. So that's great news coming out of Pittsburgh. Or out of Louisville, rather, where Pitt and Louisville played early on in the day. This is a tough scene right here with Blunt being helped off the field. Yeah, Let's hope he's putting, okay. And not putting any weight on that left leg. I just hope he's okay. And thank you, know, great report out of uh, out of Louisville's program that Malik Cunningham is all right. He got kind of whiplashed down to the ground, and sometimes that whiplash creates the concussions. Catching it again, hits Garner. So we're getting a good look at Chris Katrinick, anyways. Chris Katrinick is coming in this game in an optimal situation for him. Really, nothing to lose. Corners playing off. You pitch and catch, gain some confidence. So you don't know who this quarterback is going to be going forward. One of the end zone. Overshoots his intended receiver. Leek Bowen Sims getting some time now for Duke at that receiver spot. And Chase Bryce, you know, lot the reports and the news of him transferring to Duke, Duke kind of thought they had all their quarterback worries, uh, you know, solved. And you know, to Chase's credit, you know, he came in and he knew he was going to have to win the job and he was a, named the starter. After about you know a month of being here, but you know he he talked about the competition was really good in that quarterback room, and how these guys in, in Ketchmick and Holmberg really you know helped tutor him, kind of even get him to progress to where he is right now. And uh, you know, we'll see what happens going forward. But that many turnovers and the lack of offense that we've seen in the first three weeks it could lead to an early change. Ketchmick. Trying to look downfield, and he's brought down. Gam was there. I mean, Gam's had a big day, too. All these linebackers are so active. Looking up fourth down for the Blue Devils. Katrinic staying in there. Play fake. Now running out of time, and he'll get sacked. Nick Jackson's had a great game. Yeah, he sure has. You know, we talked about Zane Zandier, the 15 total tackles. Nick Jackson, he's got 12 tackles. Tackle for loss, a sack. I mean, he, he doesn't have that same experience. He's able to really use his talents well. Good job coming around the edge. He's going to be a bright spot on this team as only a true sophomore for many years to come in Charlottesville. Lindell Stone now a quarterback for Virginia. He hands off to Paris Jones. Yep, stays on his feet. Will be forced out of bounds near midfield. It's interesting. This is the first time we've seen Paris Jones. Small, quick. Running back 5'8", 175 pounds. He's a state champ in the 4x100. This kid can absolutely fly in Virginia. We thought we might see a little bit more of him, but really with the way Wayne Talapapa has been running and Shane Simpson came off the bench, they're pretty good in terms of you know the two running back systems. Dump off pass to Kelly. 
He's going to get dropped in the backfield. Brendan Armstrong completing his first start for the Virginia Cavaliers. It was, Mark, would you say it was rocky? But a win? <laughs> Is that how you, could you describe it that way? It's tough to describe, right? I mean, you know. It's almost like uh, you know a roller coaster, the start of a roller coaster, where you're on that uphill climb to start, and you're creeping up there, and then all of a sudden you get to the top, and all of a sudden you let loose. And I think there was a point in this game where Brennan Armstrong was just fighting an uphill battle, and all of a sudden he reached the top and gained some confidence with the ground game and using his legs, and it seemed like he just let loose, and it was really good to see. Ended up with a pretty good day in terms of numbers. Yeah, it ended up being not a terrible day in terms of the numbers, even though the first three quarters, it didn't look like it was going to end up this way. And he has found a receiver in Lavelle Davis Jr. I mean, these two look like they may have a you know a battery here that could last for a while and be very yeah, fruitful. For sure. And you know what's happening too right now. <laughs> this is Lavelle Davis. He's from South Carolina. You know Dabo Sweeney saying, how come we did not get this guy? Yeah. And Duke is very happy to have him. And, and, you know, Lavelle Davis, 6'7", 210, just, you know, been really, really good. A couple drops early, but then just, you know, kind of got in rhythm. Anytime you have a first-time quarterback in there, to have an outlet like that it really does wonder for the quarterback's confidence. The other thing that you, I think we learned about Brendan Armstrong today is that he's really good with his feet. He has 47 yeah. yards on 10 carries in that touchdown. Uh, he, he, no one's going to mistake him for Bryce Perkins, but he's still very capable of making plays with the not only his escapability, but on design runs. Yeah, Robert and I, the offensive coordinator, said you'll probably see a multi-quarterback system this game because he has guys who can utilize their run game, you know, maybe a little bit like Bryce Perkins did, but I think what Brennan Armstrong did today was prove that you don't need to have another guy come in to have those plays be effective. He can do it himself. Bobo bobbles the punt. And another on the turnover. muff, Virginia. Yeah, another turnover. Virginia covers up. It has just been a nightmare fourth quarter for the Duke Blue Devils. That. John Taylor, the long snapper. He actually was just awarded a scholarship in August. He was a walk-on. Ben Wyatt, the, the long, usual long snapper, opted out. And John Taylor got the scholarship, got the job. And Got the muff recovery. Recovery. Stone will take a knee, and that will do it, Mark. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, you know, I think what we learned about Virginia is they do have some firepower on offense. They did not lose everybody, and Brennan Armstrong, if he can get a rhythm, he can really produce. And and Duke really needs to hold on to the football. They cannot win games turning it over this much. Dave Cutcliffe is going to have to go back to the drawing board and really shore up the ball possessions by his football team. Virginia wins their first game of the 2020 campaign. Now they travel to Clemson next to take on the Tigers. Duke, meanwhile, will wel welcome Virginia Tech next week. You and I will be there for that one. Our final score, 38 to 20. Virginia with the win. Now let's send you to the studio. Jordan Cornett and company take it away.